All praises to the most high. So tonight's topic is called the lips of a strange woman. The lips of a strange woman. That's tonight's topic. Um, let's open up with the book of Proverbs, chapter 15. Proverbs chapter 15, might be verse 2. Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 2. Watch this. Proverbs 15, verse 2. You know, Proverbs chapter 15, verse 3. Okay, read that. The book of Proverbs chapter 15. You know what? You know, you know what? Read verse 2 for me. Proverbs 15, verse 2. Read what you got. The book of Proverbs chapter 15, verse 2. Come on. The tongue of the wise useth knowledge aright. Come on. But the mouth of fools poureth out foolishness. Read it again, verse 2. Come on. The book of Proverbs, chapter 15, verse 2. Go ahead. The tongue of the wise uses knowledge, right? Mm -hmm. But the mouth of fools poureth out foolishness. You see what the Bible is saying? It says, the tongue of the wise uses knowledge, right? Because the tongue of the wise, they use the laws of God to what to speak. Their speech is governed by God's commandments. It says, but the mouth of fools poureth out foolishness. Meaning what? Is talk without sense. Watch this. Give me that in Sarah 21. Ecclesiasticus chapter 21 verse 18. You know, instead of verse 17. The book of Ecclesiasticus chapter 21 verse 17. Go ahead. They inquire at the mouth of the wise man in the congregation and they shall ponder his words in their heart. That's what the wise men will do. Wise men and women will do this thing right here. Read verse 17 again. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 21, verse 17. Go ahead. Inquire at the mouth of the wise men in the congregation, mm -hmm. and they shall ponder his words in their heart. You see that thing? Now read the next verse. Watch this. Because the wise one will inquire at the mouth of the wise men in the congregation, and they shall ponder his words in their heart because his words is the words of as it is written. That saith the law. Go ahead. Verse 18. As is a house that is destroyed, mm -hmm. so is a fool. And the knowledge of the unwise is talk without sense. Is as talk without sense. So a house that is destroyed is the same as when you give wisdom to a fool because wisdom to a fool will bring forth destruction to their mind. Because it's what? They have no sense. Then it says, the knowledge of the unwise is as talk without sense. Because that mouth is not governed by God's laws. That, that's why it says they will pour out foolishness. Okay, go back to where was it now? Proverbs chapter 15 verse 2 again. The book of Proverbs chapter 15 verse 2. Come on, put the your power. Put, put, hold on. Put some power in your reading. Come on. Proverbs 15 not, verse 2. Let's go. The book of Proverbs, chapter 15, verse 2. Read. The tongue of the wise useth knowledge aright, mm -hmm. but the mouth of fools poureth out foolishness. But the mouth of fools will pour out foolishness. Why? Go back to Sarah 21, read verse 15 now. You know, instead of verse 14, Proverbs 21, I mean, Sarah 21, 14. Read that. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 21, verse 14. Come on. The inner parts of a fool are like a broken vessel. Uh -huh. really? and, he, and he will hold no knowledge as long as he liveth. You see what the Bible is saying? It says the inner parts of a fool are like a broken vessel, a broken cup. You understand? Because once a cup is broken, you, it cannot hold no water. Likewise, the mind of a fool is like that. It can hold no knowledge as long as they live. That's what the Lord is saying. Because the Lord is telling you that your mind is broken. So because your mind is broken, you need to acknowledge that it's broken so that the laws of God can bring the cup back together, can heal that broken mind back together. You see that thing? Because this is a place of healing. Because we use the laws of God to heal the minds of our people. Okay, watch this. Give me that in Jeremiah, okay? Jeremiah 14. Jeremiah chapter 14, verse 17. Read that. Come on. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 14, verse 17. Read. Therefore, thou shalt say this word unto them, that mine eyes run down with tears night and day. 
and let them not cease. For the virgin daughter of my people is broken with a great breach, with a very grievous blow. I want you to put power in your reading. Come on. Don't mess me up now. Read verse 17 again. Come on. The book of Jeremiah chapter 14 verse 17. Therefore, thou shalt say this word unto them. Let mine eyes run down with tears night and day, and let them not cease. For the virgin daughter of my people is broken with a great breach, with the uh -huh. very grievous blow. You see what the Bible is saying? It says, because the verb is says, for the virgin daughter of my people is broken with a great breach. Meaning the cracks that you're reading about in, in Sarah 21. You understand? That's what he's talking about right there. He says, for the virgin daughter of my people is broken with a great breach, with a very grievous blow. That's why now, when you don't acknowledge that, you are going to be a fool that will hold no knowledge. So go back to Sarah 21, verse 14 again. Okay, read that again. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 21, verse 14. Read. The inner parts of a fool are like a broken vessel. Mm -hmm. And he will hold no knowledge as long as he liveth. Why? Because for the virgin daughter of my people is broken with a, with a great breach, with a very grievous blow. That's why. Keep reading. Verse 15. Go ahead. Verse 15. If a mm -hmm. skillful man hear a wise word, he will commend it and Read. add unto it. But as soon as one of no understanding heareth it, it displeaseth him, and he casteth it behind his back. You see that thing? So now, when a foolish man will hear a wise word, guess what? It will displease them and they will cast it behind their back. That's why they will hold no knowledge as long as they live. So now when they open their mouth, they want to open their mouth in foolishness. So go back to Proverbs 15 verse 2 again now. Come on. The book of Proverbs chapter 15 verse 2. Read. The tongue of the wise useth knowledge aright, mm -hmm. but the mouth of fools poureth out foolishness. You see that? But the mouth of fools will pour out foolishness. Anything else but the laws of God. That's the mouth of fools. You're not going to find knowledge. Next verse. Go ahead. The eyes of the Lord are in every place. Read that Beholding again. The book of Proverbs, chapter 15, verse 3. Go ahead. The eyes of the Lord are in every place. Mm -hmm. Beholding the evil and the good. You see what the, the Bible is saying? It says the eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. The eyes of the Lord is the angels. The eyes of the Lord is the angels. They behold the evil and they behold the good that men and women do on earth. Read again, verse 3. Go ahead. The book of Proverbs, chapter 15, verse 3. Come on. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, mm -hmm. beholding the evil and the good. Read. Is that it on that? Now give me Matthew 5. Okay. Give me that in Matthew. No, no, Matthew 18. Give me Matthew 18, verse 10. Watch this. Matthew chapter 18, verse 10. Watch this thing. What we read in Proverbs is what Christ is going to teach us right here. We watch God. Come on. The book of Matthew, chapter 18, verse 10. Read. Right. Take heed that he despise not one of these little ones. We are the little ones. The Lord is saying, take heed that he despise not one of these little ones. We are the little ones. Go ahead. For I say unto you, mm -hmm. that in heaven, their angels do always behold the face of my father, which is in heaven. Read that thing again. Read that verse again. Read verse 10 again. The book of Matthew, chapter 18, verse 10. Read. Take heed that ye despise not one of these little ones. Mm -hmm. For I say unto you, that in heaven, their angels do always behold the face of my father, which is in heaven. You hear what the Bible is saying? It says, take heed. You understand? Meaning what? Be very mindful how you deal in the congregation. Because it says they are angels. He didn't say they are angels. He says angels, meaning plural. Their angels do always behold the face of 
my father which is in heaven. Meaning they go up, you understand, every day, all the time, to go and report what that nigga is doing, that, what that nigga be doing, what that Jezebel be doing. That's what the Bible, that, this is Christ speaking right here. I want you men and women to pay attention. You understand? A lot of you, you think they the most, you, you don't believe the Bible. So when you do things, you think the most that God will not pop these things out. Watch this. Give me the book. Give me the, I'm going to give an example. Give me the book of 2 Kings. Okay? Give me 2 Kings real quick. I'm going to show you something with Gehazi. Gehazi was Elisha's servant. Okay? Gehazi had a covetous spirit. But watch this. 2 Kings chapter 5. Read verse 20. Because here there was a Syrian king that had issues and he was told on what to do in order for him to get healed. Meaning he was going bathe in the Jordan River that his leprosy may be healed. You understand? So he wanted to pay for the services that was rendered by Elisha. And Elisha was like, no, no, no. I don't want no money. Watch this. 2 Kings 5 verse 20. Go ahead. 2 book of Kings chapter 5 verses 20. Read. But Gehazi, the servant of Elisha, the man of God, said, Behold, my master had spared Naaman the Syrian. He says that my master has spared Naaman. Go ahead. My master had spared Naaman the Syrian in not receiving at his hands that which he brought. Right. That which he brought. But as the Lord liveth, I will run after him and take somewhat of it. You see that thing? He says, Elisha didn't take anything. But because he had a covetous spirit, he went after Naaman. He went after Naaman to get something from his hands. We know. So Gehazi followed after Naaman. And when Naaman saw him running after him, he lighted down from the chariot to meet him and said, Is all well? Is all well? Come on, he's asking the question because he's seeing coming running. So he, now he wants to know what's going on. Go ahead. And he said, All is well. My master had sent me, say, Behold, mm. even now they become to me from Mount Ephraim, two young men of the sons of the prophets. Give them, I pray thee, a talent of silver and two changes of garments. So now what's going on here says, he's lying. He says, my master. But, but Elisha didn't send him. So he's bearing false witness here. That's what's going on right here. He's breaking the ninth commandment. So he's saying, my master has sent me when my, his master didn't send him. So he's dropping names too. Okay, go ahead. He says, no, two sons. He says, two young men of the sons of the prophet, they're going to be coming from Ephraim. You understand? Read. And Naman said, be content. Take two, tal take two talents. And he urged them and bound two talents of silver in two beds. With mm -hmm. two changes of garments, and laid them upon two of his servants, and they pay them before him. You see what happened? So what happened is that he, he was given two talents of silver in two bags and two changes of garments. You understand? So Naaman's servants was like, okay, you're gonna be before him. They're gonna help you to go to carry the stuff back with you. Watch this. Go ahead. And when he came to the tower. He took them from their hand and bestowed them in the house. And mm -hmm. he let them go and they departed. So now Naaman's servants, let, they, they, they were gone because they helped him to carry the stuff. Because he got those things by deceit. He lied. Okay, go ahead. But he went in and stood before his master. Now he's and standing before Elisha. Now he's standing because remember, those things are hidden. You understand? Now he's sitting before his master, Elisha. Go ahead. And Elisha said unto him, When mm -hmm. comes thou, Gehazi? Where are you coming from? Where do you come from, Gehazi? Go ahead. And he said, Thy servant went nowhere. He says, I didn't, know, I didn't go anywhere. So he was his covetous. His covetous spirit caused him to lie. You see that thing? His covetous spirit caused him to lie. So now they are asking him, Listen, where were you? He says, no, I didn't go anywhere. Go ahead. And he said unto him, went not my heart with thee? When the man turned again, 
from his chariot to meet thee? You see what Elisha is asking? Him? Hold on. He says, when not mine heart with ye, with you. He says, didn't my spirit go with you when you went to meet that man? When you went to meet Nama? He says, my spirit traveled with you when you went over there. So a lot of the times is that you read the history because you doing your chapters and so forth. You read the history. You don't pick up because that's why I read Proverbs 15 verse 3. You understand? Matthew 18 verse 10. So you can understand what's going on, what the Lord is trying to show us. It says they are angels. You understand? They always what? They behold the face of my father, which is in heaven. Meaning they report what's going on. So Elisha's servant, guess what? He's, he's, because he was covetous and he had the spirit of a lying demon on him, he completely forgot what the scripture says. You understand? He forgot that. That Elisha's spirit traveled with him wherever he went. You come into the camp, you do stuff, you think we don't see you because we're not with you. But there is the most high God is with us. His angels, they always behold the face of the most high all the time to report on what's going on. So likewise, what you are reading here with Elisha and Gehazi, that's exactly what happened. That's why Elisha was like, but you lie because my spirit went with you. I know exactly what you've been doing. You see that thing? So we need to be, that's why I always tell you, brothers and sisters, put yourself in this book. Because the Bible is not a fairy tale book. The Bible is real. You understand? The Bible is a real book. The spirit of the most High God is what gathered the, the words that are written in this book together. But as long as you just despise, because you think we're the little ones, we don't know nothing. Listen, we just read, go back to Matthew 18 verse 10. Because I want this verse to marinate so we understand what's going on. Okay. The book of Matthew, chapter 18, verse 10. Read. Take heed that he despise not one of these little ones. Mm -hmm. For I say unto you that in heaven there are angels to always behold the face of my father, which is in heaven. You see that thing? Watch this. Give me second Ezra chapter 16. Second Ezra chapter 16, verse 62. Watch this. Okay. Watch what the Lord is saying right here about this thing. We what you got. Come on. Second book of Ezra, chapter 16, verse 62. Right? Yea, and the spirit of Almighty God, which mm -hmm. made all things and searcheth out all hidden things in the secrets of the earth. You see what the Bible is saying? It says the spirit of the Mosa that made all things. It says it searcheth out all hidden things in the secrets of the earth. Go ahead. Watch this. Read on. Surely he knoweth your inventions. You see what the Bible is saying? It says the Most High God knows our inventions, meaning our imaginations, the things that we imagine, we think nobody's seeing. The Lord says, I see that. Go ahead. And what you think in your heart. And what you think in your mind, your thoughts. The Lord knows every thought that crosses our mind. Read on. And what you think in your heart, even them that sin and would hide their sin. You see what the Bible is saying? It says, even them that sin and would hide their sin. The Lord says, I see that too. I'm aware of that as well. Go ahead. Therefore, had the Lord exactly searched out all your works and he will put you all to shame. You see what the Bible is saying? The most High God says, I'm going to search out your works and I'm going to put you to shame. Read on. Go ahead. And when your sins are brought forth, you shall be ashamed before men. Wait, hold and on. Wait, wait, wait. It says, and when your sins are brought forth, ye shall be ashamed before men. Go ahead. And your own sins shall be your accusers in that day. Read that part again. Read that last part again. And your own sins shall be your accusers in that day. You see what the Bible is saying? It says your own sins will be your accusers in that day. Because you sin, you hide your sins. You don't take heed to the counsel, to the classes that go out. Guess what the Lord says he will do? Keep reading. Verse 66. Read on. What will you do? Or how will you hide your sins before God and his angels? 
Read that part again, verse 66. Second book of Ezra, chapter 16, verse 66. What will you do? Or how will you hide your sins before God and his angels? It says, what will you do? Or how will you hide your sins before Mo the Mosai and his angels? We just read about that in Proverbs. We read about that in Matthew 18. You understand? Because the most of the eyes of the Lord are everywhere. Go ahead. Verse 67. Behold, God himself is the judge. Mm -hmm. Fear him. You see that? From it says God himself is the judge. Meaning, the more, if the Lord has to come down and judge you, it's a wrap. You understand? So you would rather be judged by men on earth to use the scriptures. We do our little judging here on earth. You understand? The matters that we can handle. But if the Lord has to come down, there's not going to be any negotiations because you don't listen to the man on earth that the Lord has ordained. So you waiting for him to bring forth the judgment. There's not going to be any, okay, I understand. No, the most High God, when he comes, is a ramp, it's done. Okay, read. Fear him, leave off from your sins and mm -hmm. forget your iniquities. Read. Meddle no more with them forever. So shall God lead you forth and deliver you from all trouble. You see what he's saying? He says, so shall God lead you forth and deliver you from all trouble. So when you do that, the Lord says, I'm going to deliver you from all trouble. I'm going to deliver you from trouble, the Lord is saying. Read that verse again. Come on. Second book of Ezra, chapter 16, verse 67. Read. Behold, God himself is the judge. Fear mm -hmm. him. Live off from your sins. And forget your iniquities to meddle no more with your to meddle no more with them forever. So shall God lead you forth and deliver you from all trouble. So the Lord is saying, listen, he says, don't meddle anymore with your sins. You understand? You know you are doing wrong. The Lord is saying, don't go back and meddle with your sins. Because if you do, your sins will be your accusers in that day. That's what he's saying right there. Okay. Now watch this. Give me, give me the book of Sirach 23. Okay, give me Ecclesiasticus. Give me Sirach 23 and verse, verse 19. Watch this. Sirach chapter 23, verse 19. Read that. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 23, verses 19. Read. Such a man only feareth the eyes of men, Meaning such and a man, no. hold on, the Bible is written in a masculine form. So it's such a man or woman, it says, they fear the eyes of men. You are worried what men see or don't see you. You worried about that. The Lord is telling us, don't worry about that. Okay. Hence why we read the precept that we just read. Go ahead. And knoweth not that the eyes of the Lord are 10,000 times brighter than the sun. Mm-hmm. Beholding all the ways of men and considering the most secret parts. You see what the Bible is saying? The eyes of the Lord, that's the angels. It says what? The eyes of the Lord, they are 10,000 times brighter than the sun. Doing what? Beholding all the ways of men. What you do when we think nobody's seeing. You, what you do, you think nobody's looking. It says, listen, they be considering the most secret parts. So you cannot hide nothing from the most high. That's why when the scriptures come out, you follow the examples of our forefathers. Watch this. Give me that in Psalms 119 verse 59. We follow the examples of our forefathers that came before us. Okay? We what you got. Come on. The book of Psalms, chapter 119 verses 59. Come on. I thought on my ways. Mm-hmm. And turned my feet unto thy testimonies. He says, I thought on my ways and turned my feet unto thy testimonies. That's what the most high God wants. That's what the Lord is looking for. Okay, go ahead. I made haste mm -hmm. and delayed not to keep thy commandments. Read. The band read of the wicked rock. Read verse, read verse 60 again. Come on. The book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 60. Mm -hmm. I made haste and delayed not to keep thy commandments. 
You see what the Lord is saying? This is King David speaking here. He says, I made haste and I did not delay to keep the commandment. Why? Because he understood the seriousness of what? Returning back to the Father. Not making excuses. You understand? Not dragging your feet because your soul is on the line. That's what the Lord is saying right there. Because a lot of the times you are so in love with your sin, you don't want to detach from it. You are so in love with your lust, you don't want let, to let it go. That sin, that lust will get you killed. But the Lord is trying to teach us. You understand? We need to take heed and apply. We mustn't waste time on this thing. Give me that in Matthew chapter 13, verse 15. Okay, Matthew 13, verse 15. The book of Matthew, chapter 13, verses 15. Right. For this people's heart is waxed cross, and their mm -hmm. ears are dull of hearing, and their right. eyes, and their eyes they have closed. Lest so thou Lord, time, this is Christ speaking. Hold on. Wait. The Christ is quoting Isaiah, Isaiah 6. He says, For this people's heart is waxed gross, meaning with sin. Okay. He says, their ears are dull of hearing, meaning we're spiritually deaf. And their eyes, they have closed, meaning we're spiritually blind. Okay, go ahead. Lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them. The only time when healing will come is when you are converted first. That's the requirement. You, call, you get converted first, then the Lord will bring forth healing unto you. If you don't get your mind right and say, okay, I acknowledge my sins, I want to repent, then the Mosa goes, okay, when you show your seriousness, then he's going to bring forth healing unto you. Give me that in Psalms 19 verse 7. It says what? It says, and should be converted and I should heal them. Read that, Psalms 19 verse 7. The book of Psalms, chapter 19, verse 7. Read. The law of the Lord is perfect, mm -hmm. converting the soul. You see that? The, the yes. laws of God is perfect. That's what converts us. So the laws of God being perfect, guess what? That's the only ingredient that is going to work. That's going to convert our minds from being a simpleton, from being a wise man or woman. That's what the Lord, that's what the Most High God wants for us. We just have to trust in the Lord to repent and keep God's commandments and not go back to our sins. That's what the Lord is looking for. We don't. The testimony of the Lord is sure, mm -hmm. making wise the simple. You see that thing? Because we are simple. We need the laws of God to give us what? To give us healing, to give us some wisdom. Now watch this. Give me that in um, Wisdom of Solomon 16 verse 12. Okay. God's laws is what's going to heal us. You know what? Give me Psalms 107 verse 20. Let's just read that. Psalms 107 verse 20. The book of Psalms, chapter 107 verses 20. Mm -hmm. He sent his word and healed them. Right. And delivered them from their destructions. You see that? So the word of God is what's going to heal the black man and the black woman to get our minds right, to separate ourselves from our own sins. That is what the most High God wants. You understand? Now watch this. Um, give me, give me the book of Proverbs now. Let's get into the topic. Give me Proverbs 5, verse 1. Okay, the lips of a strange woman. The lips of a strange woman. Proverbs chapter 5, verse 1. Read that. The book of Proverbs, chapter 5, verse 1. Come on. My son, attend unto my wisdom and bow thine ear to my understanding. So now the Most High God is, is teaching us about women. But he's saying, listen, in order for you to understand and know the difference between a righteous woman and a, and, and a Jezebel, you understand? You what? You need to pay attention to the laws that are written in this book. Okay, read on. That thou may that thou mayest regard discretion, and that thy lips may keep not. Proverbs chapter five verse one. Come on, my son, 
attend unto my wisdom and bow down and bow thine ear to my understanding. Meaning pay attention to the understanding that's coming out. Read on. That thou mayest regard discretion and that thy lips may keep knowledge. You may regard discretion, meaning character. You understand? And that thy lips may keep knowledge. Read. For the lips of a strange woman drop as a honeycomb mm -hmm. and her mouth is smoother than oil. You see what the Bible is saying? So the only way you're going to be able to deal, to see, to or to discern a strange woman, guess what? She's going to flatter you with her tongue because that flattery is not, she's not using the laws of God to talk to you. She doesn't open her mouth in wisdom. She opens her mouth with flattery. You understand? So you, she uses the tongue to say juice and to deceive you. That's what the Lord is saying. Read again. Verse 3. Come on. Proverbs 5 verse 3. For the lips of a strange woman drop as in honeycomb. Mm -hmm. And her mouth is smoother than oil. You see that? The lips of a strange woman drop as a honeycomb. A honeycomb that goes into honey and her mouth is smoother than oil. Go ahead. Come on. But her end is bitter as wormwood. Really? Sharp as a two-edged sword. No, is it? But he says, but her end is bitter as wormwood. Because this strange woman, she's using the things that she knows will be able to make a man yield to her ways. She's using her beauty. She's using her, the, she's using her body. You understand? She's using everything that she knows will make a man yield to her what? To her to his seductive, seductive spirit. So the Lord is saying, it says, her, her end is bitter as wormwood, meaning poisonous, sharp as a two-edged sword, meaning she's going to get you killed. Read. Her feet go down to death. Her steps take hold on hell. You see that? Meaning what? This woman, everything about this woman is nothing but what? Nothing but evil. Nothing but death. She will definitely get you killed. That's what the Lord is saying. But for you to, to be able to see that, you need to be in this Bible. You need to apply what is written so that you may be able to discern a righteous woman from an unrighteous one. Read. Lest thou shouldest ponder the path of life, her ways are movable, that thou canst not know them. You see that? It says her ways are movable. If you ponder the path of, of life, you understand? He says, lest thou shouldest ponder the path of life. Her ways are movable. Meaning what? You cannot predict it. You understand? What did, what did Brenda Fassi say? Okay. That's what we're reading here. You understand? That's what, we, that's what Brenda Fassi said. May her soul rest in peace. She said, mm -hmm. that's what we're saying. Her ways are movable that thou cannot know them. Because she, the only thing that she has on you is what? She knows how to control it with her flattery, with her tongue, and with her looks. You understand? That's classic Jezebel techniques. Read on. Go ahead. Hear me now, therefore, O ye children, and mm -hmm. depart not from the words of my mouth. He says, don't depart from the laws of God in verse 1 and 2. Read. Remove thy way far from her. And come not nigh the door of her house. Okay, I need you to read a little bit quick. We're reading too slow. Read verse 8 again. Yes, sir. Proverbs chapter 5, verse 8. Read. Remove thy way far from her, and come mm -hmm. not nigh the door of her house. You see, you see what the Bible says? Stay away from this type of woman. It says, remove thy way far from her, and come not nigh the door of her house. Why? Because she's going to put you to death. She'll destroy you. That's what the Lord is saying right there. That was to stay away from this type of woman because she flatters with the tongue. She'll tell you that you're the best thing that has ever happened since sliced bread. But you know that you look like a ragamuffin, but she'll convince you that you look like Denzel. Mm -hmm. That's what this, this woman, that's how capable she is. She make you like, um, you look like um, mm, Yasuke, that Afro samurai. Can't you or not? You don't have no muscle. Now watch this. Give me Proverbs 6.23. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 23. Go ahead. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 23. Read. For the commandment is the lamp, and the mm. law is light, and Read. the proofs of instruction are the way of life. 
You see that? For the commandment is a lamp and the law is light. The law is light. So God's laws is what we read in Proverbs 5 and 1 and 2. You understand? Verse 7 as well. What the Lord was using, he said, listen, pay attention to my words that you may be able to skip away from a strange woman that flattereth with her lips. I Meaning this woman, she knows how to deal with men. She knows how to work men out. You understand? She knows how to seduce men. So she understands what men want and not in a good way, in a negative way, but she's, she's going to poison you either way. Okay, read that again, verse 23. Come on. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 23. Ray. For the commandment is a lamp and the law mm -hmm. is light and Ray. the proofs of instructions are the way of life. So the laws of God is what's going to reprove us. God's laws is what's going to give us instruction of wisdom to correct us when we go off. You understand? Because that's the way of life. Read on. Go ahead. To keep thee from the evil woman, Stop from right the flattery. The most I keep going back and over and over from this woman to this woman. He keeps going back over and over to this woman. He says, to keep thee from the evil woman. So it's letting you know the only way you're going to be able to see an evil woman from a good one, you need the laws of God. That's why you see today, many of our brothers and sisters in the world, they what? When you speak to men, really, you need to sit down. That's why they have gentlemen's club. They go to um, these private clubs where it's just men. And the conversation, they smoke cigars and be drinking scotch and whiskey and so forth. Guess what the, what's the conversation about? Yeah, they talk business, but the majority of the conversation is about the women. They don't understand what the hell is going on because they have not... They have not been attentive to the laws of God. Read that thing again, verse 24. Okay. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 24. Right. To keep thee from the evil woman, mm. from the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman. So the evil woman and the strange woman, she knows how to what? She her weapon is her tongue. Because when she catches you with her tongue, you already you already fallen for what she looks like on the outside. Then when she opens her mouth, she speaks your language because you're vibrating on the same frequency. And these evil women, they can see a strange woman, a evil woman, this Jezebel woman, these horish women, they can see, they can know, they, they are able to see that brother right there has a low self-esteem. They can tell. They can tell. They know how to identify a brother with a low self-esteem. They know how to do that. Once they understand that brother has a low self-esteem, guess what? You're gone. you finished. You understand? That's why you brothers, you need to study. You need to seek counsel to build your spirit up. Read that thing again. Verse 24. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 24. Go ahead. To keep thee from the evil woman, from the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman. Read. Last not after her beauty in thine heart. Mm -hmm. Neither let her take thee with her eyes. You see what he's saying? Don't, he says, last not after her beauty in thine heart. Don't let her beauty hold you prisoner. That's what he's saying right there. Like we read in Judith now. You understand? It says, neither let her take thee with her eyelids. Why? Because the way she look at you is talk about those wanton eyes. Like we read in Isaiah 3.16. Get that real quick. Isaiah 3.16. Where they be, they have these umbrellas. They've got long lashes too. You understand? They put mascara on and all that. And when they look at you, they look at you with those sexual eyes. They know how to do that. Give me that in uh, Isaiah three sixteen. Read that. Isaiah chapter three verse sixteen. Mm -hmm. Moreover, the Lord said, because the daughters of Zion are haughty and walk with stretched forth necks and wanton eyes. Come on. Walking and mincing as they go and making a tinkling with their feet. So now it's all about the attention. It says they walk with stretch forth necks, you understand, and wanton eyes. You see that thing right there? It's all about the looks. Wanton eyes, meaning sexual eyes to attract men, walking and mincing as they go and making a tinkling with their feet. Meaning what? To catch the attention of men, to get men's attention. That's why they dress the way they dress. That's why they decorate themselves the way they do. That's why they paint themselves the way they do to get the attention of men. You see that thing right there? So go back to Proverbs chapter six. 
Proverbs 6 and verse 26 again. Verse 26 now. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 26. Mm -hmm. For by means of a horish woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread. Bread. And the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. So you see that? So this strange woman, you understand? This strange woman is an evil woman who is a whorish woman. Because remember, she she what? She knows how to, she her, her weapon is her tongue. Her weapon is her beauty. You see that thing? That's what we're reading here. Her weapon is her tongue, her beauty, and her coochie. Because here it says, for by means of a whorish woman. So what is her weapon? What's between her knees? That's her weapon. What's in her mouth? Her tongue. You see that thing? Her beauty. That's what she uses to catch men. She doesn't have to be smart. She can be dumb as a rock. But if she has these three things, beauty, okay, she knows how to deal. She knows how to, to, to flatter men. And guess what? She goes to the gym. She look good and so forth. Guess what? She knows how to catch men. That's what the Lord is. The most that God is giving you the blueprint on how to identify a whorish woman. These are her weapons. She's got a weaponry also. You understand? Because you the prey. Read that thing again, verse 26. Go ahead. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 26. Pray. For by means of a horish woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread. A and man is brought to a piece of Hold on. A man is brought to a piece of bread. She will finish you financially because that's why she's there. Go ahead. And the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. The adulteress, which is what? This adulteress, that's the whorish woman. That's the strange woman. That's the evil woman. She's an adulteress. She's not a wife, nor is she a wife material. Why? Because she's hunting for the precious life. That's what the Lord is telling you right there. Watch this. Give me Proverbs 7 verse 1. Proverbs chapter 7 verse 1. Proverbs chapter 7 verse 1. Come on. My son, keep my words. And lay up my commandments with thee. So the Lord keep repeating over and over. You understand? He says, take heed to these laws. Don't, let, don't depart from these commandments because they're going to save your life from the evil, strange, whorish, and adulterous woman. Go ahead. Keep my commandments and live. Mm -hmm. And my law as the apple of thine eye. That's what you, that's, that's your first love right there. He's, the laws of God, that's our first love. So the most that God is giving us is a listen, you keep my commandments, you're gonna live. And the laws of the, these laws, they are you, these are your that, that's your first love. You understand? Go ahead. Bind them upon thy fingers, write them upon the table of thine heart. Meaning your mind. Go ahead. Say unto wisdom, thou art my sister, and call understanding thy kinswoman. You see that thing? Because wisdom will give you understanding. So he's letting you know how close you must be with wisdom. Like he's your sister. You understand? Like your king's woman. So what is he saying? You must hold close to wisdom. You must hold her fast. She will exalt you. Okay, go ahead. That they may keep thee from the strange woman. Mm. From the stranger which flattereth with her words. You see that? It keeps going back over and over because remember, King Solomon, he's speaking from experience. He understands what he's saying because he dealt with a thousand of them. And he says, out of all them thousand women, there was none that was a virtuous woman. All of them was dumb. That's what he's saying. So he's telling you what to look for and how, what to use in order for you to identify a strange woman from a what? From a righteous one. And women can fake it for a while. They can fake, they know how to fake stuff. You understand? So you have to be patient enough to let the most High God do his thing. You just be faithful to what is written that saith the Lord. Go ahead, read it again. Okay, verse five again. Proverbs chapter seven, verse five. Mm -hmm. That they may keep thee from the strange woman, from the stranger which flattereth with her, with her words. From the stranger which flattereth with her words. Go ahead. For at the window of my house, I looked through my casement. So now he's telling you, say, listen, um, I'm, uh, he's, he's explaining to us, listen, use these words that are going to help you. They're going to save you from a strange woman, 
from a strange woman that is going to flatter you with her words. So why is it that that's why the Lord keeps saying, read verse one again so I can show you what the, what's going on here. Because in verse five, there's some there's words he used which we can we'll be able to identify them in verse one. Watch this. Read verse one again. Proverbs chapter seven, verse one. Mm -hmm. My son, keep my words. 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 Meaning, keep my commandments. He's going to tell you in the next part of that verse. Read. And lay up my commandments with thee. And lay up my commandments with you. That's the words. So the Lord is saying, listen, you pay attention to my words. Pay attention to my commandments. And guess what? Read verse 5. I'm going to show you something. Okay, read. Proverbs chapter 7 verse 5. Come on. That they may keep thee from the strange woman. Mm -hmm. From the stranger which flattereth with her words. And from the stranger which flattereth with her words. Her words. She's not going to flatter you with God's words. She's going to flatter you with her words. You see the difference? So when you learn the words of God, you'll be able to identify her words from God's words because you know the words of God. You know the laws of God. So when she opens her mouth, she better open her mouth in wisdom. She better open her mouth with what the Bible says. As soon as she opens her mouth, it doesn't line up with the script. That's an evil woman right there. That's an evil woman that's want to flatter you with her tongue. Your job is to respond based on what? The words that the Lord says, keep, make, you see, keep my laws. You understand? Attend unto my words. Like we read in Proverbs 5 and 1. That's the same thing here. So you can be able to tell the words of a strange woman because she's going to flatter you with her words. I get if she's a righteous woman, she will flatter you with the words of the Most High. And you'll be able to tell if she's faking the funk or she's being real. That's what the Lord is showing you right there. Read that thing again. Verse 5. Come on. Proverbs chapter 7, verse 5. Mm -hmm. That they may keep thee from the strange woman, from the stranger, which flattereth with her words. Come on. For at the window of my house, I looked through my casement. Mm -hmm. It says because, it says because, that's the word for means, is because at the window of my house, I looked through my casement. So it says how he was looking through the window of his house. Go ahead, read. And beheld among the simple ones, I descend among the youths, a young man void of understanding. So he says, I'm looking through the window. I'm seeing simple young men who dumb as hell, who don't know nothing about women. You understand? Because verse 5 is letting you know, this strange woman will flatter you with her words. Now he's saying, I'm looking through my window and I'm seeing. So it's like you walking this down the street, you, you peeping through the window, you see what's going on. You see young men void of understanding being deceived by women because they are simple as hell. Go ahead. Passing through the street near her corner and he went the way to her house. What verse you had? Verse 8, sir. Read verse 8 again. Proverbs chapter 7, verse 8. Mm -hmm. Passing through the street near her corner and he went the way to her house. Meaning this young man that is void of understanding, he went the way to her house. This woman that we read in verse 5 that flattered with her words. This young man that is void of understanding, he was taken by this woman. Because why? Because of lust. Because he had lust. He was full of lust. His youthful lust. He didn't want. He was void of understanding. And this woman could pick it up. with This brother right here, he's void of understanding. I can deceive him with my words. My works, meaning what? My evil works, my feminine wiles, and he's going to yield to my ways. So sisters, like, they know how to what? They know how to hunt men. They are hunters. Okay. Now read on. Go ahead. In the twilight, in the evening, in the black and dark night. Right? Because this, this is what, this, this, this woman, she knows how to deal. She, she also operates at night. You understand? She knows night vision warfare. She's fully equipped. You know, especially at night, she knows how to deal with men. During the day, she also knows how to deal with men during the day. You understand? Go ahead. 
And behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an harlot and mm -hmm. subtle of heart. And subtle of heart, like we read in verse five, because this woman, she knows how to deal with men. She knows how to identify a simp. And when she identifies a simp, she'll come after you. Because why? She, 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 she likes the traffic that's coming to her. That's why she dressed to impress men. She wants to do it for men's attention. She's not focusing on building herself up. That's why the sisters in the world, they're not focusing on that because that's all they know. But when you come into the truth, you're still moving like that hoary, shameless daughter out there. Guess what? You're not serious about this truth. You are hunting for men in this truth to destroy and to what? To destroy and to kill spiritually and physically too. Because that's what it will lead to if this behavior doesn't stop. Okay? Read that again, verse 10. Come on. Proverbs chapter 7, verse 10. Mm -hmm. And behold, there met him a woman with the attire of a harlot and subtle of heart. And subtle of heart, meaning what? She's evil. She's got a subtle spirit. That subtle spirit is how she catches men because it's not obvious to a man, a young man that is void of understanding. If you are a young man void of understanding, you're not going to see it. Okay, go ahead. She is loud Hold on. and stubborn. You see, you see that part right there when it says, with the attire of an harlot? Because sisters come into the truth, but they're still, what? Spiritually, she's got the attire of an harlot. Spiritually. Yeah, she looked the part, but she's still that shameless whore in the world. But she's hiding behind long dresses and fringes and a bore of blue. So in the world, the sisters in the world, they just do it because we know, they don't know the scripts. You understand? That's the only weapon that they've been taught in this captivity, that that's what they must use. But that's not the weapon to use when it comes to the Most High. The weapon to use when it comes to the Most High is you being obedient to what is written in this book. Then the Most High God will begin to guide you and deal with you, okay? But it says, a tie of an harlot, meaning what? She's got a mask on, a spiritual mask and a physical mask because she dresses the part according to the scripts, but it says she's subtle of heart. So she's still that what? She's still that whorish woman. She's still that adulterous woman hunting for the precious life to catch men, simple men, void of understanding. That's what the Lord is telling us right there. Okay, go ahead. Verse 11. She is loud and stubborn. Her mm -hmm. feet abide not in her house. He says she's loud and she's stubborn because a woman like this, they don't want to be corrected. They don't receive correction, they, but they make it seem like they do because remember verse 11, verse 10 says she's subtle of heart. So these type of women, they know how to make it seem. They, they know how to, to show what they, they think you want to hear. They tell you what you think you want to hear. But if you're not spiritual, you're not going to pick these things up. You don't apply the laws of God. You're not going to see these things. You understand? So that's why it says she's loud and stubborn. Her feet abide not in her house. So guess what? I guess she's supposed to be what? She's supposed to be in the house, getting herself right, instead of being a what? Instead of being that spring chicken. That's why it says she's loud and stubborn, meaning she don't want to apply. Because for you to be loud, that means the tongue. You don't have control of your tongue. I get you are loud. So when you receive instruction, you speak. So you can't hear nothing. Or you make it seem like you are hearing something. You say, I'm receiving it. Yes, sir, whatever, whatever. But you're not receiving it. Why? Because the Lord is telling you that their tongue is what they use. Either they're going to be direct or they will be indirect. Direct is, I'm going to speak over you. But because you are in this truth, we'll check you. You won't do it. You know how they do it? They'll say, yes, sir, I'll do it, but they don't do it. But they are still being loud and stuff. It's the same thing. But you need the words of the Most High God to see that thing. That's why the Most High God stay in the book. Okay, next verse. Verse 12, go ahead. Proverbs chapter 7, verse 12. Mm -hmm. Now is she without, now in the streets, and lieth in wait at every corner. You see that thing? It says, now is she without, meaning she is outside or she's without any brother or any man dealing with her. And if they do, they sex her and they drop her like a bad habit 
they move on to the next one. She's always without, whether she's out, she's, she's without, you know, without any man pursuing it, because guess what? You don't follow instruction, you've got a big mouth, or you are subtle of heart. That will not attract no men. Men don't attract, men are not attracted by them. Men who are attracted to you is men that want to sex you and leave you. But if you have a, if you are a silent and loving sister, you sincere and truthful in this truth, guess what? You're going to attract a husband. But if you have a big mouth or you have a subtle heart, you want to destroy men, you will attract that wicked Negro who's going to sex you and leave you. That's what the most High God is trying to show us here. Read again, verse 12. Proverbs chapter 7, verse 12. Mm -hmm. Now is she without, now wait. in the streets, and layeth in wait at every corner. You see that? Now in the streets, and layeth in wait at every corner. Looking for what? Young men void of understanding, like we read in verse 7. That's who she's looking for. These young men that are void of understanding because they are filled with youthful lusts. That's why. Now read verse 21. Go ahead. Proverbs chapter 7, verse 21. Come on. With her much fair speech, she caused him to yield. Mm. With the flattering of her lips, she forced him. But did she really force him? No, she did not. Because here it says, with, the much, which, with, with her much fair speech. What does that mean? Give me Proverbs 10, verse 19. I'm going to show you what it means. It says, with, with her much fair speech, she caused him to yield. Read that. Proverbs 10, verse 19. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 19. Mm -hmm. In the multitude of words, they wanted not sin. You see that? In the multitude of words, they wanted not sin. Meaning sin is involved in there because they speak a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. You even end up losing the point of really what was the point of the conversation in the first place. That's why he says, in the multitude of words, they wanted not sin. Read. But he that refraineth his lips is wise. Meaning those that know when to speak and what to speak, they are wise because the laws of God is what's guiding them to open their mouth. And when they do, they open their mouth using the words of the most High God. That's a wise man or woman right there. So go back to Proverbs 7, verse 21 again. Proverbs chapter 7, verse 21. Go ahead. With her much first speech, she caused him to yield. Mm -hmm. With the flattering of her lips, she forced him. With the flattering of her lips, she forced him. But she didn't force him because in the first part of the verse, it says she caused him to yield, meaning to submit to her what? To her feminine wiles. Okay, go ahead. He goeth after her straightway. As Stop an right there. Hold on. Because remember, verse 21 says, with, with much fair speech, meaning with much, which, with much sin. Because remember, it says, in the multitude of words, they wanted not sin. Here it says, with her much fair speech, she caused him to yield, meaning she was flattering him. Then it says, he goeth after her straight way, meaning immediately he's following her. Why? Because he's a young man void of understanding. That's what we read in here. He says, he goeth after her straight way, immediately. He's following after the, the Jezebel. Go ahead. As an ox goeth to the slaughter. You see that? Or as a fool. Now you are going for a death, for your death. You're following a straight way as an ox to the slaughter. You're not thinking at this point because you are what? You are filled with useful lust. And guess what? Jezebel is able to identify those things in men. So if you're busy focusing on getting the coochie, you're supposed to be focusing on getting your mind right so you can identify a sister who's what who wants to be a wife. Likewise, the sisters as well, a brother who wants to be a lord, a leader in Israel. So, yeah, but I'm dealing with the sisters this day, okay? So it says, um, straightway you go as an, as an ox to the slaughter because you are followed, your lust is what's driving your decision making. Okay, go ahead. Or as a fool to the correction of the stocks. Because why? You did not take heed to the words that was given to you. The laws of God. Go ahead. Till a dart strike through his liver, mm. and the bird hasted to the snare, 
and knoweth not that it is for his life. You see that? Meaning this woman is going to destroy you. That's why it says, till it does strike him through, through his liver. That dad goes into diseases, goes into stress. It goes into anything that will be for your destruction because she's hunting for the precious life. So she will do anything and everything to please you because she has an end goal. She's like Thanos, the end game. She knows exactly what she wants and she will do anything and everything to get to what she wants because she's got a subtle spirit. That subtle spirit is not the subtle spirit that wisdom gives you. No, it's the subtle spirit that Satan gives it. Keep reading. Go ahead. Hearken unto me now, therefore, O ye children, and attend to the words of my mouth. Mm. Let not thine heart decline to her ways, go not astray in her paths. You see that thing? It says, let not thine heart decline to her ways. I get to decline is to what? Is to reject, is to, in the, in the context of reject, in the context of um, uh, to fall. Something is declining, meaning it's falling. Here he's talking about in terms of falling, he says, let not thine heart, meaning your mind, fall to her ways. So many don't fall for her ways. That's what the Lord is saying. Because what are you falling for? Get that in Sarak 9 real quick. It's not in my notes, but I'll read it. Sarak 9, okay. Sarak chapter 9, verse 5. Read that. It is verse 9. Read verse 3. Sarak 9, verse 3, then you're going to read 5. Ecclesiasticus. Chapter 9, verse 3. Read. Meet not with an harlot, lest thou fall into her snares. You see that? Don't meet with an harlot. The harlot that we read in Proverbs 7, verse 10. You understand? In the world or in the truth. Go ahead. Use not much the company of a woman no, no. that is a singer. Read verse 5 now. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 9, verse 5. Come on. Gaze not on a maid, mm -hmm. that thou fall not by those things that are precious in her. You, goes, you know why he's saying this? Is because it says, don't gaze. Meaning, because when you are gazing, you are staring. He says, don't stare on a maid, meaning on a young woman, that you fall not by those things that are precious in her. She knows the things that are precious, precious in her. So when she's flattering you, you with her tongue, she knows you're not listening to what she's saying. You are looking at how she looks. You men understand that? Yes, sir. Yes, you are not listening to nothing, but you are looking at how she looks. And she knows or she's going to distract you based on how she dresses. But guess what? When she speaks, she knows that you're not listening to anything she's saying. You just agree. But you are distracted by how she looks. That's how she catches you. You see that thing? That's why it says, and, and thou fall not by those things that are precious in him. We all know what that, those things are. So go back to Proverbs chapter 7, verse 25 again. Proverbs chapter 7, verse 25. Go ahead. Let not thine height, de Proverbs chapter 7, verse 25. Mm -hmm. Let not thine heart decline to her ways. Read. Go not astray in her paths. He says, go not astray in her paths. Go not astray in her paths. So because her path is the way to hell, right? For she has cast down many wounded. Yea, mm. many strong men have been slain by her. You see, she's a slave queen. This woman right there, she's a slave queen. That's why we're reading it says, for she had cast down many wounded, meaning many men have fallen, have won, have been wounded by this woman. Yea, many strong men have been slain by her. You see that thing? Many strong men, meaning men that were strong and mighty in the scriptures, they were slain by this woman because she is the devil. Keep going. Verse 27. Her house is the way to hell, going mm. down to the chambers of death. Read that verse again, verse 27. Proverbs chapter 7, verse 27. Mm -hmm. Her house is the way to hell, going down to the chambers of death. You see that thing? So now guess what? When you're dealing with a woman like this, one, the, the one reason that is causing this woman to behave like this, there's only one thing that is causing this woman, this sister, to behave the way that she does. Watch this. Give me the book of Sarah 33, okay? 
Give me Sirach 33, verse 27. Sirach 33, verse 27. Watch this. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 33, verse 27. Mm -hmm. Send him to labor, that he be not idle. For idleness teacheth much evil. You see what the Bible is saying? It says, send him to labor, that he be not idle. It says, for idleness teacheth much much, much evil. So idleness is the reason why a woman will get like this because she's too idle. She's got too much time on her hands. Now, if she gets things to do, she don't do them. Obviously, she's, again, idleness is the, is the, is the name of her game because in her idleness, she's able to plan evil against men. You understand? Evil against men. I need you men to understand this. Now watch this. You see that part, it says, send him to labor that he be not idle because idleness teacheth much evil. Now keep reading, read the next verse. Watch this. Set him to work as mm -hmm. is fit for him. Meaning if, if, as it is good. When it says as it is fit, meaning as it is good for him. Because when they are idle, they do evil. So give him work because work is gonna work, is gonna be good for them. Read. If he be not obedient, put mm -hmm. on more heavy fetters. You see what he's saying? He says, if he's rebellious, if she's, because now we're dealing with the sisters. If the sisters are rebellious, he says what? Add more stuff. Why? Because we're preventing the evil that we're reading in verse 27. Because a lot of evil can take place when there's too much idleness going on. That's what the Lord is saying right there. Okay. Read that thing again, verse 28. Ecclesiasticus chapter 33, verse 28. Mm -hmm. Set him to work as is fit for him. Right. If he be not obedient, put on more heavy fetters. He says, if he is not obedient, put on more heavy fetters, meaning give him more work to do. Now watch this. Give me First Timothy 5, verse 13. First Timothy chapter 5, verse 13. Watch this. First Timothy chapter 5, verse 13. And with all, they learn to be idle, mm. wandering about from house to house. And not only idle, but turtles also and busy bodies, speaking things which they ought not. So now, what we read in Sirach 33 is, is an example of what's going on here. This is talking about the sisters now. Read that again, verse 13. First Timothy chapter 5, verse 13. Mm -hmm. And with all, they learn to be idle. They do what? They learn to be idle. Because if you are learning to be idle, that means you've got way too much time on your hand because you are learning. Meaning you are learning and you are, guess what? You are, you have, you have given yourself the, 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 the cut blanche to learn to be idle. Because being idle is something you learn. Because guess what? When you are given stuff to do, you don't do it. You understand? So you are learning to be idle, although there's stuff for you to do, but you are teaching yourself to be idle. That's why it says, we and with all, they learn to be idle. Give me that in Ezekiel 16, verse 49. Let's see what happens when, there, when idleness takes place. Because we know it says it teaches much evil. Get that in Ezekiel, okay, 16, verse 49. Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 49. Go ahead. Behold, this was the iniquity of thy sister Sodom. Pride, mm -hmm. fullness of bread, and abundance of idleness was in her and in her daughters. Neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and needy. Now, I want to show you something. You know what? Jump up. Read verse 47. Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 47. Hold on. You know what? Hmm. Read verse 46. Let's start there. We're going to read down. Okay. Come on. Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 46. And thine elder sister is Samaria, she and her daughters that dwell at thy left hand, and thy younger sister that dwelleth at thy right hand is Sodom and her daughters. 
You see that? Now he's, he's, he's casting Judah out. The Lord is casting Judah out that Judah is following after the footsteps of Ephraim. After what they saw, what the Lord did to Ephraim, being taken into captivity by the Assyrian. But Judah didn't stop. They didn't learn from it. They went after, they went after um, Northern Kingdom to go into whoredom and idolatry and wickedness. So now the Lord is saying, just like our sins, uh, um, just like Ephraim's sins were of Sodom and so forth, Judah also is doing the same thing. It says, is Sodom and her daughters. Now, meaning the daughters now, they are acting like the daughters of Sodom and Gomorrah. That's what the Lord is saying. It happened back then, it's happening today. And today it's worse. Read on. Yet hast thou not walked after their ways, nor done after their abominations, but as if that were a very little thing that was mm -hmm. corrupted more than they in all thy ways. You see what the Lord is saying? He says, listen, you went overboard. You did worse than Ephraim did. That's what the Lord is telling Judah right here. Go ahead. He says, he says what? He says, thou was corrupted more than they in all thy ways. We took it a step. We took it, a, we took it to another level. The sisters took it to another level back then during the time of Ezekiel, during the time of Babylon. Guess what? Today we are under Babylon the Great. What is the state of the black woman? What is the image of the black woman? Twerkers, hoes, you understand? Twerkers, hoes, that's what, that's what they are. Shameless daughters. That's the image of the black woman today, the daughters of Zion. You understand? Keep reading, go ahead. As I live, thus says the Lord God, so mm -hmm. thy sister has not done, she nor her daughters as thou hast done. Thou and thy daughters. You see that thou and thy daughters, meaning you and your daughters. Look at the daughters of Israel today, the black woman, shameless, disrespectful. You understand? They are shameless, they are disrespectful, obnoxious, proud, haughty. You understand? Big mouth. They've got rise. They think they're above the man. They think they are men. That's the mindset. So now it's okay to just be a whore. Because the world teaches that. The world promotes that. When we teach what the black woman must put cover her behind, the black men that are the simp brothers, they fight. Horish women, they fight with us as well. Why? Because our people don't want to return back to this book to get their minds right. So we can be honorable among the nations. Because right now we are a reproach. That's why we're going through what we're going through right now. Okay, go ahead. Behold, this was the iniquity of thy sister Sodom. Pride. Mm -hmm. You see that? Of bread. Pride. Pride. He says, this was the iniquity of thy sister Sodom. Pride. That's why it says the daughters of Zion are haughty, meaning proud. That's what we're reading here. You understand? Pride, meaning what? They dress like men. That's pride. They think they are men. That's pride. They think they can do by themselves, which they are delusional. That's pride too. You think they think they can do the work that men do, that men can do. That's pride. And they are delusional as well. You understand? They say they are independent. They say they are independent. Matter every system that they use was built by men. You see that thing? But they say they are independent. No, they are not independent. They are just given the illusion of independence. But they are not independent. Every engineering structure. Every system that is developed on this earth was built by men. But they say, no, they don't need men. They are independent from them, but they are using men. They are using men. They, they are living in a, in a man's world because it is a man's world. Yes, some, somehow, but it is the truth. You understand? Okay, read that part again, verse 49. Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 49. Go ahead. Behold, this was the iniquity of thy sister Sodom, pride, mm -hmm. fullness of bread, and fullness abundance. Of bread. So when it says fullness of bread, meaning what? There's abundance of food and riches and, and so forth. That's why it says fullness of bread. All you have to do, just be a whore on YouTube. Just be a whore on Instagram. You get views. They pay you for your nakedness. You understand? That's what's going on now. Go ahead. 
an abundance of idleness was in her and in her daughters. You see that part right there. It says abundance of idleness was in her and her daughters. That's why you see our sisters today, they are too idle and they are too independent because that's what they've been taught to think when they are too independent. It says, I do me, I'm me. I'm getting mine. That's, that, that's the word they use now. I'm me, I'm getting mine. All of them. Where is that coming from? Because why? They're moving in the spirit of sorrow, pride, the spirit of pride. You understand? Abundant, abundance of idleness was, is in her, meaning the mothers as well, and the daughters as well. Okay, read on. Neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and needy. Meaning what? YOLO, you only live once. They only care about themselves. They don't care about their sisters. They don't care about their brothers, their fathers, their uncles, their husbands. They don't give a damn about that. That's why they smoke like men. They dress like men. They speak like men. They fight like men, so they think. You understand? Go ahead. And they were hot and committed abominations before me. Therefore, I mm -hmm. took them away as I saw good. So maybe the, maybe the Lord says, I'm going to bring forth judgment upon you. That's what he's saying right there. I will bring forth judgment on you. Now watch this. Now let's go back, okay? Go back to 1 Timothy 5 verse 13. Because the reason why we went over here was to explain the abundance of idleness. Idleness teaches much evil. So that means... Now, the, the evil that was back then, the evil that it is today, you cannot even measure it, okay? That's what the Lord is trying to show us, okay? Go back there. First Timothy 5, verse 13 again. First Timothy, chapter 5, verse 13. Go ahead. And with all, they learned to be idle, mm. wandering about from house to house. Stop right there. They're doing what? Wandering about from house to house. Wandering about from house to house. Watch this. Give me that in Sarah 51, 23. Ecclesiasticus chapter 51, verse 23. So the house that, the, the reason why the Lord called you here is for you to come and learn and to be a daughter, to be a sister, to be a wife and so forth. Not for you to come here and then you leave here, you go and wander at somebody else's house doing much evil and wickedness. Read that. Sarah 51, verse 23. Read what you got. Ecclesiastes chapter 51, verse 23. Mm -hmm. Draw near unto me, ye unlearned, and mm -hmm. dwell in the house of learning. You see that? It says dwell. It didn't say wander from house to house. It says dwell in the house of learning. You are called here, you stay here, you learn, so you can be built up. That's what the Lord is telling you. That's a commandment, by the way. This is not a suggestion. The most high God doesn't give suggestion. He gives law and order. That's it. Okay. Now let's go back. Because when you are wandering house from house to house, that means you leave the house of the Lord that you were sent to learn and build yourself up and be a righteous daughter of the most high God. You decided to hell with that. I'm going to do my own thing. I'm going to follow my own wicked, abominable, whorish lusts. I'm going to follow that stuff. Watch this. Give me. Give me Sarak, okay? Give me Ecclesiastes 21, 22. Sarak 21, verse 22. Ecclesiastes chapter 21, verse 22. Read. Right. A foolish man's foot is soon in his neighbor's house. Mm. But a man of experience ashamed of him, is ashamed he's, of he's him. Is ashamed of him. So it says a foolish man's foot is soon in his neighbor's house. Because he's wandering from house to house. He cannot just sit in his house and actually deal with the scripts. So you, you come here, but you're still wandering around. Hmm? Your mind is all over. Why? Because you are void of understanding. You still want to fulfill your whorish lusts. So here says, a fool's mind, man's foot is soon. That's a, a fool does that. A wise man says what? A man of experience will be ashamed of that type of man, of that type of sister. Okay, next verse. Go ahead. A fool will peep in at the door into the house. Mm. But he that is well nurtured will stand without. You see that thing? A fool, he says, a fool will peep in at the door into the house. 
meaning they are eavesdropping. Because why? They have no sense. They have no etiquette. They have no manners. They have no class. They have no standard whatsoever. So now the Lord is telling you, says, that's a fool right there. They peep in at the door. But he that is well-natured, because the scripture is always going to nurture you, he says, will stand without, meaning they'll stand outside and wait to be called. You see that thing? Keep reading. It is the rudeness of a man to hearken at the door. You see that? It is the rudeness of a man to hearken at the door. Because if you are moving from place to place, the house of the Lord doesn't satisfy you. You're going to go into somebody else's house who's going to destroy your mind because that's where your mind is. Your mind is not here. It's somewhere else. Irrespective of what the Lord has to say, you don't want to hear that. You want to fulfill your life so much that you'll ignore everything that the Most High God says. Read again. Ecclesiastes chapter 21, verse 24. Mm -hmm. It is the rudeness of a man to hearken at the door. Mm. But a wise man will be grieved with the disgrace. You see that there will be a wise man will be grieved with the disgrace. But guess what? Especially the sisters, they have no shame. You understand? They are shameless. Disgrace. You understand? They don't mind who they, who they affect. They don't mind who they hurt. They don't mind who they destroy. They don't mind who, what, what they are destroying. They don't mind. They don't give a damn about that thing. That's why the biggest obstacle in us getting the kingdom is not the other nations. No, it's the black woman. The black woman is not the mama. The black woman whose mind is not right and she doesn't want to get her mind right, she's the enemy of progress. She's the number one enemy to this truth. I'm going to tell you straight up. Okay, watch this. Go back to First Timothy 5, verse 13 again. First Timothy chapter 5, verse 13. Wait. And with all, they learn to be idle, mm. wandering about from house to house. And Wait. not only idle, but tattlers also and busy bodies, speaking things which they ought not. That part right there. You see that part where when it says, they are not only idle, he's repeating it again. Because while they are idle, they are doing much evil because they are wandering from house to house. Not only idle, but tattlers also. What is a tattler? Gossip. That's what tattling is. Tattling means gossiping. And I now know, I see, like, I think when we go to Sandton, there's a huge billboard now. I think it's on Showmax. They sh I, think, I think it's the ad is by Showmax or something. And they are showing, they said, the new Gossip Girl. There's a new series now of Gossip Girl. They're not the old one, the new one. The new Gossip Girl. And in Midland, I saw another one. I saw there's a new uh, sex in the city. Huge billboard on the freeway. There's a new one now. So what the, they're, they're showing you, where, that's where the, the, the world that the world vibrates in those frequencies. Gossip and what? And sexual immorality. You understand? Evil communication. The world revolves around that thing. Sex, you understand? Evil communication evil concupiscence and gossip. That's how the world operates right now. You understand? That's the juice that fuels the earth right now. You understand? Now watch this. Give me, give me the book of Leviticus 19, 16. Okay. Leviticus 19, verse 16, because it says, tetlas also and busybodies speaking things they ought not. This is the law regarding gossip. Read that. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 16. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not go up and down as a tale bearer among thy people. You see that? Don't go up and down as a tale bearer among them, meaning don't be a gossip, don't be a tattler. Okay, go ahead. Neither shalt thou stand against the blood of thy neighbor. I am the Lord. Because gossiping is mad. Because gossip will lead to problems that will cause people to be so angry that they will bring death upon. That's how dangerous, because the, the gossip is because of the tongue, the tongue that is unruly. It's because of an unruly tongue. You understand? Watch this. Give me Sarah 25, 24. Here's what the Most High God commanded the men of the Most High God to do when we see evil like this. Sarah 25, 24. Read that. Ecclesiastes 
chapter 25, verse 24. Read. Of the woman came the beginning of sin, mm. and through her we all die. You see that? So the black woman is the reason why we had the bottle. I'm going to tell you straight. Because what happened was that when she listened to this, this Satan, all hell broke loose. And for 900 plus years, she was just an annoyance in the sight of Adam. Think about that. 900 years plus. That conversation has come up for, for a course of 900 years because of what happened. Don't get it twisted. You have to imagine the type of marriage they had after that. Okay, Adam and Eve, our former. Read on, our four parents. Go ahead. Give the water no passage. Mm. Neither a wicked woman liberty to get abroad. Meaning to run her mouth to speaking things which they ought not. He says we must not give them liberty. Meaning don't give them, don't give them any airtime. Don't give them time to be running their mouth, running rampant, doing evil. The Lord says don't allow that thing to go down. You see it, you must shut it down because they are here to learn. And the reason why we have to be strict like this is because of what? Is because of the evil that we see in the earth. What happens to what ha what's happening to our sisters? Because they don't listen. You understand? Watch this. It says busy bodies. Give me Genesis 35 and 1. I'm going to give an example when it says busy bodies. Like we read in 1 Timothy 5 verse 13. Genesis 34 verse 1. Genesis chapter 34, verse 1. Mm -hmm. And Dina, the daughter of Leah, which she bare unto Jacob, went out to see the daughters of the land. She did what? Went out to see the daughters of the land. She went out to see the daughters of the land. So what business did he have to go out? Did she have to go out? None. Because her job was supposed to be in the house, you understand? Not being a busybody in other people's business. She wants to find out what the daughters of the land are doing. I want to see what the women are up to. No, you're supposed to be joined to your mother and learning how to be what? To prepare yourself to be a wife. She decided, you know what? I'm going to go out. I'm going to go against everything that my parents have taught me. I'm going to go out and do whatever the hell I want. Because why? Because what they're teaching me is not enough. I want to go out because I'm eating down there, so I want to go out. Keep reading. Go ahead. And when Shechem, the son of Hamor the Hivite, prince mm -hmm. of the county, saw her, he took her and lay with her and defiled her. You see that thing? That's what happens when you sisters, you don't want to follow counsel and you don't want to humble down to what this Bible is saying. You see our former, that's our first sister. Look what happened to her. She was defiled because she went out, this Hamite defiled it. And a lot of you sisters, these Hamites, they know that you are not Hamite. They know that you're Israel. And they want to defile you and they will defile you because you don't listen. Agree, you want to play the whore in your father's house? That's exactly what's going to happen to you. Watch this. Give me Judges 19. Give me Judges chapter 19. Okay. Judges chapter 19. This is this, this woman who decided to what? Give me that Judges 19. She decided she wants to play the whore. Judges 19 verse 1. Read that for me. Judges chapter 19 verse 1. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass in those days when there was no king in Israel that there was a certain Levite sojourning on the side of Mount Ephraim who took to him a concubine out of Bethlehem, Judah. So now this, this Levite, he took a concubine out of Bethlehem, Jew. Watch this. Go ahead. And his concubine played the whore against him. Stop and right went there. Away. And hold on. Wait, wait, wait. And his concubine played the whore against him. So she thought she was clever. Okay. She played the whore against this brother. Go ahead. And went away from him unto her father's house to Bethlehem, Judah. And was there four whole months. So now it says she was there at her father's house four whole months. So obviously she didn't play the whore in her father's house. Because it says here she was there for four whole months. But when she was whoring herself, she wasn't at her father's house. 
and she said that's where she's going. You understand? Now watch this. Jump down to verse. Mm, jump down to verse. Verse. Jump down to verse. Let me see. Read verse twenty-five. Judges chapter nineteen, verse twenty-five. Mm -hmm. But the man would not hearken to him, so the man took his concubine and brought her forth unto them, and they knew her, and they abused did what? her. And they knew her. I mean, they defiled her. That's what it means. They knew her. They defiled this sister right here, this concubine who was de who disappeared for four whole months. They knew her and did what? And abused her all the night until the morning. You see what they did? These men, they are, they knew this woman. They had sex with her. It says they abused her all night until the morning. She was raped all night. That's what we're reading here. You understand? Go ahead. And when the day began to spring, they let her go. When the day began to spring, they let her go. Say, okay, go. Keep reading. Then came the woman in the dawning of the day and fell down at the door of the man's house where her Lord was till it was light. Until the sun came out. So what I'm showing you here is this. She decided to play the whore against this brother. And this was the judgment. So guess what? When we bring out these scriptures, don't play your whore in this house. You think, no, no, we don't know what we're talking about. These are the judgments that we read. Our, our, our sister back in the day, our, our sister Dina, and this was happening here. Levi's concubine. Look what happened to her. She was raped all night. Why? Because she decided to play the whore against this brother. Now watch this. Give me Sirach 22 verse 4 and 5. You know what? No, drop that. Give me, go back to 1 Timothy 5. Okay. 1 Timothy chapter 5 verse 13. 1 Timothy chapter 5 verse 13. Go ahead. And with all, they learned to be idle, wandering mm -hmm. about from house to house. Really? And not only idle, but tattlers also and busy bodies, speaking things which they ought not. You see that? Speaking things which they ought not. Give me that in 1 Corinthians 15, 33. Speaking things which they ought not. Running their black mouth with their black gums. Read what you got. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 33. Read that. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33. Go ahead. Be not deceived. Mm -hmm. Evil communications corrupt good manners. You see what the Bible is saying? He said, don't be deceived. Evil communication will corrupt good manners. The good manners is what? The laws of God. The laws of God will give you good manners. But because you don't want to receive the laws of God, you don't have good manners. You have, you have a subtle spirit that is destructive to everyone around you. You understand? Watch this. Give me... Hmm. Go back to First Timothy. Read verse fourteen now. First Timothy five verse fourteen. First Timothy chapter five verse fourteen. Come on. I will therefore that the younger woman marry, mm -hmm. bear children, guide the house, give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully. Now read verse fourteen again for me. Come on. First Timothy chapter five verse fourteen. Mm -hmm. I will therefore that the younger women marry. Stop right there. He says, I will therefore that the younger women marry. Now you have to think about it because this is this, this, this part of this verse, that's, that's this part of this verse right here. It's a, it's a process. He says, I will therefore that the younger women marry. So you need to think before they get married, they must be prepared for marriage. That's the thought. They must be prepared by their mother and father for marriage. Okay, now watch this. Give me the book of Tobit, chapter 7, verse 13. Tobit 7, he says, I will therefore that the younger women marry. Before they get married, they must be prepared for marriage by their parents. Okay, watch this. Tobit, chapter 7, verse 13. Tobit, chapter 7, verse 13. Go ahead. Then he called his daughter, Sarah. And mm -hmm. she came to her father, and he took her by the hand and gave her 
to be wife to Tobias, say, Behold, take her after the law of Moses and lead her away to thy father. And he blessed them. Now read that again. Read that again for me. Because I'm going to show you when he says, I will therefore that the younger women marry. They, before they get married, they must be prepared for marriage. That means she was still under your father's house. You are still your father's possession. Any man that steps to you, your job, the first thing is to do what? You send that Negro to your father. You want to talk to me? No problem. Go talk to my father. If you want to talk to me, go to talk to my father first. You understand? And hear what he has to say about this thing. That's, the, that's what a wise daughter will do. That's what a wise sister will do in this truth. You understand? Because she understands what the scriptures say and is for her own protection. Now read that thing again. Toby chapter 7, verse 13. Read. Then you called his daughter Sarah, mm. and she came to her father. She did what? She came to her father. So now this is our sister, Sarah. Okay. Read. She came to and her father, letting you know she was still under her father's roof before her father gave her hand in marriage. Okay, go ahead. And he took her by the hand mm. and gave her to be wife to Tobias. You see that? And gave her to be wife to Tobias because before she was given to be wife to Tobias, the father, her father and mother prepared her for marriage so that she can be fit to be married. So they made sure that she was prepared for marriage. Understand that thing. Because what you need to understand is this. I'm going to give an example, right? Give me the book of Genesis 24. Because our foremother, Rebecca, okay, that's what happened to her. Um, Genesis chapter 24 and verse... Read verse 15, okay? Genesis chapter 24, verse 15. Go ahead. And it came to pass, before he had done speaking, that you know behold. What? Hold on. Read verse, read verse, read verse 12. I'm going to show you something right here. You know what? You know, read verse 11. Read verse 11. Genesis chapter 24, verse 11. Come on. And he made his camels to kneel down without the city by a well of water at the time of evening, even the time that women go out to draw water. Even at the time where women do what? Even at the time when women go out to draw water. The time where women go out to draw water. So when Abraham servant came looking for a, for a wife for Isaac, you understand? He didn't find that woman idle, just sitting, not doing nothing. No, she was busy. She was not being idle. She was occupied. You understand? She was doing her womanly duties, being prepared for marriage. So she was doing chores. She was busy. She was not what? She was not tattling. She was not going from house to house, speaking things she ought not, like we read in 1 Timothy 5.13. No. She was, she was obeying her father and mother. She was not dealing with a boy. She was not cheating with boys online. She wasn't doing that garbage. Read that thing again for me. Genesis chapter 24, verse 11. Read. And he made his camels to kneel down without the city by a well of water at the time of the evening, even mm. the time that women go out to draw water. Read. And he said, O oh Lord God of my master Abraham, I pray thee, send me good speed this day and show kindness unto my master Abraham. Come on. Behold, I stand here by the well of water and the daughters of the men of the city come out to draw water. So because these women, these sisters, they were not busy bodies. They were not worrying, wandering from house to house. You understand? They were not idle. That's the key. They were not idle. Keep reading. And let it come to pass that the damsel to whom I shall say, let down thy pitcher, I pray thee. Let do what? That... Genesis chapter 24, verse 14. Go ahead. And let it come to pass that the damsel to whom I shall say, let down thy pitcher. Let down thy pitcher. Because she was carrying a pitcher that had water in it. So it says, the woman who I will say, let down thy picture because this woman is letting you know that this woman, 
she was a Proverbs 31 woman. She was not a bum. Okay, go ahead. Let down thy pitcher, I pray thee, that I may drink. And she shall say, drink, and I will give thy camels drink also. You see that? She, this woman, not only, she, she is a Proverbs 31 woman, but she what? She, this woman had a good heart. Because she says, not only that, but I'm going to also give your camels also to drink. Go ahead. Let the same be she, let the same be she that thou hast appointed for thy servant Isaac. And thereby shall I know that thou hast showed kindness unto my master. You see that thing? That's the favor from the most high God. A sister like that, she is a favor. She is a gift of the Lord, that type of sister. Okay. Now go back to Tobit. Tobit 7 verse 13. Okay, Tobit 7.18, letting you know that Rebecca, our foremother's parents, they were not, they were, they taught her, they, they taught her the laws of Moses and they understood she cannot be idle. That's the key right there. Okay, Tobit 7 verse 18 again. Tobit chapter 7 verse 18. Right. Then he called his daughter Sarah mm. and she came to her father and he took her by the hand and gave her to the wife to Tobias, saying, Behold, take her after the law of Moses, and lead her away to thy father. And he blessed her. You see that thing? So before the father can say, okay, my daughter is ready to be married, is because the father prepared the daughter for marriage before she, 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 was, she was fit, or she was fit to be a health meet for a man. The father, the father, and the mother made sure this sister, she's ready for marriage now. She's not going to go out there and embarrass us. She's going to have a good report. You understand? So that's what we want. That's what the most High God wants us. He's trying. That's what the Lord is showing us. And that's the standard the most High God has set. We must meet that standard. We must work our way up to meet that standard that the Lord has set. Anything outside of that will not be acceptable. Now watch this. Give me Toby 3 verse 7. Toby 3. Verse 7. Now, this is our sister, Sarah, okay, who to Tobias married, okay? Watch this. Tobit 3, verse 7. Read that. Come on. Tobit, chapter 3, verse 7. Read. It came to pass the same day that in Ecbatay, a city of media, Sarah, the daughter of Rewell, was also reproached by her father's maids. So now it says, um, Sarah was reproached by by her father's maid. She's going to tell you why. Go ahead. Because that she had been married to seven husbands, uh -huh. whom Asmodeus, the evil spirit, had killed. Before Asmodeus, they had... They, hold on. Asmodeus is the evil spirit that killed all the men that married the sister. You understand? And none of them all, 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 all dealt with her sexually yet. Before they could do, they were put to death by Asmodeus. Okay, go ahead. Before they had lain with her. Does you thou see not that know? Right there. That's why it says, says, before they had lain with her. Read. Does thou not know, said they, that thou hast strangled thine husbands? Mm. Thou hast already seven husbands. Neither was thou named after any of them. You see what it, because now the difference with this is that today our sisters, they have never been married before, but they already have multiple bodies on them. That's, that was a shame in Israel when you played the whore in your father's house. It was a shame because here, remember, look, she was married. It just so happens that those men died. So now her father's maids, they are reproaching her because of this thing. So imagine now where our sisters, they playing the whore in their father's house. They've got multiple bodies on them. What, what level of reproach do you think now you will receive this day as opposed to back then? And the sister was married. It's just that Asmodeus killed those men because they were not appointed and they were not appointed to be with her from the beginning. So now imagine today how the situation looks. It's worse because now you've got multiple bodies. You understand? They abuse it. It becomes a parachute. Nobody now wants to deal with you because now who gonna want to deal with that? But our sisters still don't get it. They still don't get. They think this is a game. You okay to be a whore in Israel? Are you kidding me? 
That's some distasteful, disgraceful things yeah, that I'm seeing this day. Now watch this. Now what's going on here is this. Give me the book of Luke 8 verse 1. You see, what you need to understand, you brothers, is that when sisters come into this truth, they've got demons on them. Where now you are just enticed by what you see on the outside and how they speak, they speak soft and all that, but she's the devil. On. She's got the devil on her. That those demons have to be gotten rid of because naturally she's not supposed to deal with multiple men in her life. She's only supposed to deal with one and that's it. What we're reading here is this. Watch this. Give me Luke 8 verse 1. I'm going to show you something with Mary Magdalene. How many demons were cast out of her by Christ and his disciples? Watch this. Luke 8 verse 1. Come on. Luke chapter 8 verse 1. Go ahead. And it came to pass afterward that he went throughout every city and village, preaching and showing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. And mm -hmm. the twelve were with him. So he was teaching that he was preaching the kingdom of God. That's why the glad tidings meaning the good news of the kingdom of God, meaning repent, repentance. What was he teaching? The law. Go ahead. And certain women which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary called Magdalene, out of whom went seven devils. You see that? It says Mary called Magdalene, out of whom went seven devils. Seven demons came out of Mary Magdalene. So think about that thing. Mary Magdalene back then, she they cast out of her seven spirits, seven demons, seven devils. What about the sisters today that are dealing with all these multiple men before they came into the truth? Now they are in the truth. They are not repenting. They are not focusing on getting themselves right so the coochie can shrink back. Now they are busy wanting to enlarge the thing. So how many demons do you think they got? Multiple demons on them. That's why we need to, that's why these laws, these classes come out like this is the reason because we read in the scripts. Give me that in John 4, 16. John 4, verse 16. Watch this. Come on. John, chapter you know, 4, verse 16. Start, start, start of verse 15. This is the, the Samaritan woman from the tribe of Ephraim. Now Christ is going to get on her because she thought she was smart. Watch this. Come on. John chapter 4 verse 15. Mm -hmm. The woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Go ahead. Jesus said unto her, Go, call thy husband and come hither. Now you see what Christ is saying? He says, Go, call your husband and come hither. Call your husband and come here, right? Watch this, go ahead. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. I have no Jesus. husband. He says, I don't have a husband. Okay, go ahead. Jesus said unto her, thou mm -hmm. hast well said, I have no husband. He says, you speak in the truth. You don't have a husband. Okay, watch this, go ahead. For thou hast had five husbands mm. and he whom thou now hast is not thy husband, in that sayest thou truly. You see what he, you see what Christ said? Christ was he, Christ, he rebuked the sister. He says, For thou hast said, he says, Thou hast had five husbands, meaning those they are no longer there no more. He says, And he whom thou, if he, he says, He whom thou now has is not thy husband. Meaning, what was she doing? She was committing adultery. So Christ is checking and saying, listen, you're in, you're in the midst of sin. You're playing the whore. That's what, that's what really this is going into. Because she, he told her, listen, he told her, listen, but the one that you have right now, that's not your husband. So that means, what was she doing? She was committing adult, breaking, breaking Exodus chapter 20, verse 14. She was breaking the seventh commandment. You understand? So what, what, what I'm showing you is that the same way Christ was dealing with sisters that had demons on them, meaning they had bodies on them, that's the same thing we do in this day. Sisters come from the world, they come into this truth, they dealt with multiple men in the world, now they come into the truth. Their job is to shut the hell up, okay, sit down and study and apply, follow counsel. Why? Because we are your fathers now. You come into the truth, leadership is your father. Understand that. And you are going to be talked to like me. I'm going to talk to you like I talk to my daughters. Why? 
because you are one of them. There's no daughter of mine who's going to be playing the whore in this house. I'm going to tell you straight. I don't want to see that garbage up in here. Now watch this. Give me, go back to Tobit. Okay. Go back to Tobit chapter 3. Read verse 9 now. Tobit chapter 3 verse 9. Go ahead. Wherefore dost thou beat us from them, for them? If they be dead, go thy ways after them. Let us never see of thee either son or daughter. So now they're saying, listen, go and kill yourself then and follow them because now you kill your husbands, you must follow them also. So see, they are reproaching you. So imagine how the reproach looks like today because the reproach, you see it on social media, you see it on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, TikTok, WhatsApp, whatever the case may be. That's where you see the reproach. Why? Because now it's a, what? It's a, it's a shame for you to be dealing with multiple men and you're not married. It's a shame. It's not a good thing. Okay. Keep reading. When she heard these things, she was very sorrowful. She was what? So that she, she was very sorrowful. That's not the mindset of our sisters today. When she hear these things, she's like, it's my body loss. You can't tell me nothing. It's my coochie loss. You can't tell me nothing. That's the mindset. You understand? Ray. So that she so thought that to have strangled herself. strangled herself. You see that she even wanted to kill herself because of what? Because of the shame and the reproach. Ray. And she said, and she said I am the only am daughter the only of my father. father. Mm. And if I do this, I do this it shall be a reproach shall unto, be him. unto him. You see that? So you see, she's thinking, you see, I'm going to show you the mindset of this sister right here. It says, if I kill myself, guess what? I'm the only daughter of my father. And if I do this, it shall be a reproach unto him. She's thinking about how, he, how he's going to make her father look, how he's going to make her father feel if she does this wicked, abominable thing. Likewise today, sisters, they don't think about their fathers when they think about a rod. They don't think about their fathers. They don't think about what would my father think about this? How would my, how I'm going to bring, she's not thinking I'm going to bring shame to my father's house. She's not thinking about that. She's just thinking about that Negro's rod. That's the only thing in her mind. She ignores the scriptures. She's going to think about that thing. But look at the example our forefathers, our foremothers left behind. You understand? I want you to see the stark difference between then and now. Ray. And I shall bring his old age with sorrow unto the grave. You see that thing? Their sisters don't think about that. That want to play the whore in their father's house. They don't care about their nation. They don't care about their father and mother, but they want blessings. You pray to the father. Who are you? Do you think the Lord is going to hear you? No, you delusional. The Moses is not going to hear you. You're busy disrespecting your fathers in this truth. You're disrespecting your parents in this truth. That's not going to happen. Understand that. When you pray, you're not praying to the heavenly father. You're praying to Satan. Okay? Keep reading. Go ahead. Then she prayed toward the window and said, Blessed art thou, O Lord my God, and mm -hmm. thine holy and glorious name is blessed and honorable forever. Let all thy works praise thee forever. That's the first thing she did, to pray to the Father. Because she did not do what she, she thought about her father, how he's going to make her father look. She said, I'm not bringing shame to my father's house. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I don't want to bring reproach to my father's house. And I don't want to destroy my father. Why? Because why? Because she was raised correctly. When she was given instruction, she applied the instruction. Okay, go ahead. And now, O oh Lord, I set mine eyes and my face toward thee. Ray. And say, take me out of the earth that I may hear no more the reproach. Ray. Thou knowest, Lord, that I am pure from all sin with men. Now read that verse again, verse 14 for me. Tobit chapter 3, verse 14. Go ahead. Thou knowest, Lord, that I am pure from all sin with men. You see what? This is our foremother right here, Sarah. It says, listen, it says, thou knowest, Lord, that I am pure from all sin with men. Meaning I have not been defiled by men. I didn't bring reproach and evil and, and disrespect to my father's house. I'm pure from all sin with men. You sisters must read this and say, you know what? I want... I want the most High God to know this about me. That's the mindset you have to have. 
You understand? Read that thing again, verse 14. Toby, chapter 3, verse 14. Mm -hmm. Thou knowest, Lord, that I am pure from all sin with men. I am pure from all sin with men. I am pure from all sin with men. Go ahead. And that I never polluted my name, mm. nor the name of my father in the Stop land right of my... Kingdom. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Read that, read that again slow for me. Verse 15. Toby chapter 3, verse 15. And that I never polluted my name, nor the name of my father Come on. in the land of my captivity. Stop right there. You see, read verse 14 and 15, and you're going to read up to that part when it says captivity. Watch this. Toby, chapter 3, verse 14. Mm -hmm. Thou knowest, Lord, that I am pure from all sin with men, Go and ahead. that I never polluted my name, nor the name of my father in the land of my captivity. Now stop right there. So she's, she, she's, she's, she's praying to the father. It says, you, uh, she says, I'm pure from all sins with men, number one. Two, I never polluted my name. Meaning when my name comes up, there's no reproach. There's no evil speech. They don't say, oh, that whore right there, that whore from that house, that whore was mama, that's like me, that's spring chicken. That one right there, that is playing the whore. Mm -mm. She didn't have that type of name. She did not have an ill name. Meaning what? Known as a Mugwanti. She was not known as a Mugwanti. No. It says, I never polluted my name, nor the name of my father. Meaning what? She didn't play the hall in her father's house. It says, in the land of my captivity. Where are we now? We are in the land of our captivity. So likewise, you can't say, oh, no matter back then, they were not in the situation that we're in. Yes, they were. And guess what? They still kept the laws of the Most High God, the sisters as well. And this is the Assyrian Empire, the worst kind of captivity. You know, one of the worst kinds that the captivity that we've ever, we've ever been under. So, but they still did what? They still obeyed the laws of the Mosa. That's why it's written here. Now watch this. Give me Deuteronomy 22 verse 20. This is the law. That's why she's saying what he's saying, what she's saying right there. Let's get the law real quick. Deuteronomy 22 verse 20. Deuteronomy chapter 22 verse 20. Go ahead. But if this thing be true, and the tokens of virginity be not found for the damsel. Meaning what? The tokens of virginity, they are not found. Meaning what? She has been defiled. You understand? And understand, sisters coming to the truth, they are no longer virgins no more in that sense of having dealt with a man sexually. That has happened already. Okay? Now you come into the truth, your job is to do what? Your job is to do anything and everything according to the scriptures to come close to how you to come to uh, to go back to how you were before you dealt with men. It's not going to happen physically, but your spirit and your body will what? The most high God will begin to heal you and get rid of that filth of those men that did them, them, them stuff unto you, them gists. That's supposed to be your mindset. The mindset is not to get more gist on you. What the hell is this? Okay. Read that thing again, verse 20. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 20. But if this thing be true, and the tokens of virginity be not found for the damsel, come on, then they shall bring out the damsel to the door of her father's house, mm. and the men of her city shall stone her with stones that she died. Come on, because she had wrought folly in Israel to play the whore in her father's house. So shall thou put a, so shall thou put evil away from among you. You see what the Bible is. That's how we dealt with things in Israel. With, with what? Shameless daughters that played the whore in their father's houses. It says, because she had wrought folly in Israel to play the whore in her father's house, so shall thou put evil away from among you. Now, what I'm sure, because we cannot do that, we cannot stone this day, but we can judge these matters. But what I'm going to show you here, it says, you see, it says they're going to bring the damsel to the door of her father's house. So what do you think happened? When, where did they stone this woman? They stoned her in front of her father's house. So that everybody can see where that house right there, that man right there, she, he's got whores in his house. That's why it says to play the whore in my father's house. That's why our foremother, Sarah, she said, 
I never polluted my name, nor the name of my father by playing the whore in, her, in, in my father's house. That's why she said what she said, because she knew the law. Now watch this. Now, here's another one. Same book. Give me Deuteronomy 22, verse 23. Okay, watch this. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 23. Go ahead. If a damsel that is a virgin be betrothed unto an husband, and a man find her in the city and lie with her. And so this be this virgin is as betrothed unto an husband, meaning she's promised to a man. So now, if she's not promised to a man, because you, if you are promised, it that means you are still under your father's house. You have not been, your hand has not been given in marriage yet, but you are promised to this man. So that means you are still your father's possession. You understand? You are still your father's possession. That some of you sisters in up in here, you are still your father's possession. Now watch this. It says, read that part again, verse 20, I mean, verse 23. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 23. If a damsel that is a virgin be betrothed unto an husband, and a man find her in the city and lie with her. And lie with her, meaning this man finds this woman in the city and lie with her. How did that happen? Get Exodus 22, 16. And the man, the man find her in the city and lie with her. So this man will find this woman in the city and he has sex with the woman. How did that happen? Get that in Exodus 22. Read that for me. Exodus chapter 22, verse 16. Go ahead. And if a man entice a maid that is not betrothed and mm. lie with her, he shall surely endow her to be his wife. But the part we want out of that, it says, if a man find a maid, if a man entice a maid that is not betrothed. So um, at this point, this woman, this woman right here, she is betrothed. But guess what? She, she, she slept with this brother. So the brother is not aware that she's betrothed because sisters do that, they lie. So because what was supposed to be the natural things according to the script, what was supposed to be the lawful thing for her to do? She was supposed to, when a man entices her, she was she's supposed to say what? No, I don't want to talk to you. You want to talk to me? Talk to my uncles, talk to my father. You give my father a call and say, you want to talk to me then your, my father will tell you the things that the requirements, the standard you need to meet in order for you to marry me. Not to go out, not to talk to me, not to flirt with me, none of that garbage, not evil communication. Mm -mm. If you want to take me for a wife. That's how the sisters, that's the mindset you have to have. And we've been bringing many classes about this thing. Read that thing again, Exodus twenty-two sixteen. 16. Read it. Exodus chapter 22, verse 16. Mm-hmm. And if a man entice a maid that is not betrothed and lie with her, he shall surely endow her to be his wife. You see that? So this woman, this man enticed this, this sister. The sister, guess what? The sister didn't want, she didn't, she, she did not remember the instructions she was given by her father. She didn't remember that because she was driven by lust. Now go back. Go back to Deuteronomy 22. Okay, read verse 24 now. Watch this. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 24. Mm -hmm. Then ye shall bring them both out unto the gate of that city. Of that city shall... where they met. Of that city where they what the men and the women met and they had sex. Read. And ye shall stone them with stones that they die. Go ahead. The damsel, because she cried not, being read. in the city. And Stop the man, right it says the damsel because she cried not, meaning what? She liked the things that he was doing to her. She liked those things. That's why it says because she cried not, she wasn't raped. Meaning what? It was she. She gave consent. That's why it says because she cried not, meaning she liked it. She liked what this man was doing to her. That's why it says both of them must be put to death. Go ahead. Because she cried not, being in the city, and the man, because he has humbled his neighbor's wife. You see that so, part right there? Because he had, he had humbled his neighbor's wife, humbled her sexuality. Because she's betrothed, technically that's your wife, but you're still under your father's roof until the day of the ceremony where your father officially lets you go. 
But the point here is that because it's what he had humbled her and his neighbor's wife, he commission, they both of them committed adultery. So shall thou put evil, evil away from among them. Why does the Lord keep saying that? Because that thing, if was, there was no judgment for it, Israel was going to do it continually. That's why it says, so you put evil away from among them. That's why all Israel had to be involved in this thing. So that those that are thinking of doing it, those that is actually, they cross their mind, they must what? They must use the laws of God to get rid of that thought. So that it does not even cross the mind. They focus on the instruction they are given by their parents, their fathers and mothers. So that's what the Lord is saying right there. That's how we kept evil out of, out of our nation and our community, because we dealt with it like this. Now the most High God, how does he deal with it? Guess what? He's the one that deals with it now. How? Disease, pregnancy, you get raped like we read in Judges 19, you get defiled, you understand? You commit abortion, they sex you, they give you a baby. You, you see that thing? All of them. And now you are a baby mama, nobody wants you. You die by you die with that bastard child. But these are things that sisters don't listen to. They don't think about this stuff. Okay. Now watch this. Go back to Tobit. Go back to Tobit 3. Read verse 15 again. Tobit chapter 3, verse 15. Read. And that I never polluted my name, nor the name of my father in the land of my captivity. You see that? So she didn't play the whore in her father's house. Read. I am the only daughter of my father. Neither has he any child to be his heir. Neither Read. any near kinsman, nor any son of his is alive, to mm -hmm. whom I may keep myself for a wife. Stop right there. You see what he's saying? You listen to what she's saying. It says, to whom I may keep myself for a wife. That's all she's thinking about. She's thinking, she's thinking nation. She's nation-minded, this sister. It says, if I can, I'm not going to deal with a man because I'm keeping myself for a wife, not for a girlfriend, not for a Jezebel, not for Mguanti. No, I'm keeping myself for a wife. So while she's keeping herself for a wife, what is she doing? She's preparing herself to be a wife. How? She's been given instruction, Titus 2, Proverbs 31, chores, instruction, what to, how to clean, how to cook, how to wash, how to clean your clothes, how to, what, how to clean the house, all of that, how to cook, hmm? get a skill. These are all the things that, these are the tools equipped to prepare yourself for a wife. So that the day you get married, you don't bring shame to this name, to our name. You don't do the stuff like that. Why? Because... That's how we were. That's how we honored marriage. This is an example of marriage being honorable right here. This sister is nation-minded. You understand? The important things in her head is not the tongue, is not, um, is not, is not the, the, is not her body, is not her looks, is not her makeup, is not her long dress. Mm -mm. She's already has that. But her mindset is that I need to keep myself for a wife. Guess what? Also, even my speech, even my associations are not going to be what? Outside of this book. Give me that in Psalms 119 verse 63. Because King David, he mentioned this thing. Psalms 119 verse 63. Okay, watch this. Our foremother Sarah, she did not get in, herself involved in gossip. She didn't tattle. She was not moving from house to house, speaking things she ought not. Her mind was what? She thought about her name her father's name, you understand? And keeping herself clean from all sins with men and keeping herself for a wife. Therefore, she was being prepared to be a wife until Tobias showed up on the scene. That was the Lord rewarding her for her patience and her, and her discipline in God's laws. Understand that. Read that. Psalms 119 verse 63. Come on. Psalm chapter 119 verse 63. Read. I am a companion of all them that fear thee and of mm. them that keep thy precepts. So David, King David is teaching us, he says, he says, I am a companion, meaning the people that I keep company with is those that fear the Lord, number one. Then it says, and them that keep the precepts of the Lord, they keep the commandments. Those are the people that you keep company with, that you speak to. The sisters in the truth, you sisters, you conversate with other sisters in the truth. That's why we have that. Why? 
to make sure that you keep your legs closed, you open the Bible, you stay in this book. You understand? If you need any advice, talk to leadership. You're going to be given advice on how a daughter is supposed to behave herself. That's it. Same going for you men, but today is not your day. Now watch this. Um, give me, give me the book of, give me Sirach 7. Okay, give me Sirach chapter 7, verse 25. Ecclesiastes 7, verse 25. Read that for me. Sirach 7 and verse 24. I read verse 24. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 24. You know what? Hmm. Read verse 23. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 23. Go ahead. Hast thou children? Instruct them and do bow what? down their neck. Instruct them. He says, do you have children? Yes. Yes. They've got overgrown, uh, overgrown men that are still wearing diapers up in here. And sisters too, the same situation going on. So hast thou children? Yes. He says, what must, what must happen to these children? Instruct them. Instruct, hence the classes and the councils. Go ahead. And bow down their neck from their youth. Bow down their neck from their youth, meaning give them instructions in righteousness so they apply, so they what? They don't become demons when they grow up. Go ahead. Has thou daughters mm. have a care of their body really? and show not thyself cheerful toward them? He says, has thou daughters in have, he says, has thou daughters have a care of their body. Yes, do, we, do I have daughters? Yes, I do. You understand? I've got older daughters, I've got younger ones. The Lord is saying, he says what? He says, have a care of their body. Meaning what? What they dress, how they dress, who they speak to, you understand? Who they associate themselves with. I need, that's my business to know all of that. Who you talk to? What do you do on your phone? Who you talk to on your phone? I need to know those things. Why? Because the most High God says, have a care of their body, okay? And show not yourself cheerful towards them. Why? Because when they are left by themselves, they do much evil when they're left by alone by themselves. You understand? Get Sirach 42, verse 10. Read verse 9. Sirach 42, verse 9. So you cannot leave them by themselves. Mm -mm. Hell no. Sirach 42, verse 9. Read what you got. Ecclesiastes chapter 42, verse 9. Go ahead. The father waketh for the daughter when no mm -hmm. man knoweth. Stop right there. He says, the father waketh for the daughter when no man knoweth. The father will watch. The father's job is to watch for, their, for, for his daughter, you understand, when no man knoweth. With the man that eventually will marry him, he don't know nothing before, before the day, when before the time when it's time to prove and the time to decide if that's the man that he must marry. But what we're reading here is the father we get for the daughter when no man knoweth. The job of a father is to think about how to protect the daughters because the sisters are vulnerable. That's the job of a father. As a father, that's what you think about. You must think about how to make sure that your daughter don't grow up to be a bitch. That's your job, to make sure that she's not disrespectful, she's not mugwanti, you understand? She does not bring reproach and shame to your house. To humble her with the scriptures, to make sure that she's what? She's a righteous and respectable, honorable young woman who will be what? Who will be married one day. That's the job of a father. Part of that is you take stock of everything that they do. Everything. I mean, elk a den. Why? Because they are not supposed to be left by themselves. You never read anywhere in the Bible where the woman was by themselves. No. From your father's house, you go straight to your husband's house. There is no point where you are in the middle, you are a boyfriend, you are a girlfriend. Mm -mm, no. You don't read that in the Bible. Okay. Read that thing again, verse 9. Ecclesiastes chapter 42, verse 9. Read. Right. The father waiteth for the daughter when no man knoweth. Mm -hmm. And the care for her taketh away sleep. The care for her taketh away sleep. That part right there. Because the, the thing that is going to take away sleep is what? All the above things that I've mentioned, not only that, your job is to do what? Go back to Sirach 7. Now read verse 25. He says, the care for her taketh away sleep. You understand? Sirach 7, 25. This is 
what's going to take away sleep because your job is to prepare for this big day. And this is not a small feat. You understand? Ray. It is here to chapter 7, verse 25. Ray. Marry thy daughter. You see, that's so what they did. Hold on. That part when it says marry thy daughter, before marriage can take place, preparation for marriage must come first. Like we read in 1 Timothy 5, 14. Toby 3, verse 7 through 11 or 15, somewhere there. It says, marry thy daughter. That's not a small feat. Okay, go ahead. And so shall thou have performed a weighty matter. That part right there. And so shall thou have performed a weighty matter. Marriage is a weighty matter. Marriage is one of, is one of the, is if not the most heaviest feat to take in this truth is marriage. You understand? To preparing a brother for marriage, preparing a sister for me, that's not a small job. That's a heavy job. You have to make sure that you guide, you instruct, you counsel, you read spirit, you see mm, something wrong here, fix that quickly because you cannot enter into a marriage like this. So that's what we're reading. It says, and so shall thou have performed a weighty matter because marriage, that marriage will determine what type of nation will, be, will come out. If the marriage is, is not sitting on the right foundation, the nation is not going to sit on the right foundation. If Jezebel and Ahab are married, guess what? You're going to have evil in Israel. You understand? Then you've got Adam and Eve after they've sinned, they're blaming each other. You're going to have evil in Israel. You want Abraham and Sarah. You want Tobit and Anna. That's the type of marriages you're looking for. You see that thing? Judith and Manasseh. That's the type of marriage you want, as an example. My point is this. Marriage is a weighty matter. It's not something to play with. That hence the preparation is what is key. You have to prepare. The preparation is more important than the actual day of the wedding. Preparation is going to determine what type of marriage you're going to have, not what type of wedding you will have. No, what type of marriage you are going to have. The preparation is the key, is the foundation. Read that thing again, verse 25. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 25. Go ahead. Marry thy daughter. And so shall thou have performed a weighty matter, mm -hmm. but give her to a man of understanding. That's another, that's another feat. To be able to, to, to know that that's a man of understanding. You have to, me as a father, I have to prove that man. As a father, I have to prove him. To make sure that he is a man of, and he understands this book. He's not faking the funk. He's not just pulling precept, but he has no understanding. He doesn't apply nothing. That's not a man of understanding. That's a fool right there. So the key, that's why this is not a small fee. That's why the Mosa is saying weighty matter. It's a weighty matter. You understand? It's a way, that's why proving is, proving is so important in this truth. Okay. So go back to Sarah 42 verse 9 again. Ecclesiastes chapter 42 verse 9. Really? The father waited for the daughter when no man knoweth mm -hmm. and the care for her and the care for her taketh away sleep. When she when? is young, when she's she what? pass away. When she is young. When she is young. Because remember, it says, Has thou daughters have a care of their body and change and show not yourself cheerful towards them? That's why in verse 24 it says, Do you have children? Instruct them and bow down their neck from when they are young. That's what we're reading here. It says, for the care for her, take care of the way sleep. From the time they pop out of their mother's womb until they become 20 years old, 24 years old, 25 years, that's your job. To make sure that they are what? They are groomed the right way. No oversight. So that's why he says, when she's young, you come into this truth, you don't know nothing. You must be taught again. Go ahead. When she is young, let she pass away the flower of her age. You see that? Let she plus she passes the flower of her age. Meaning what? She gets defiled in her father's house. Go ahead. And being married, lest she should be hated. Because once she gets married, she's gonna be hated because now she's no longer a virgin. She has got multiple bodies on her. That's why it's important if you've done that before, you're coming in here, you've dealt with a man before, or multiple men. Your job is to what? If listen, you must make yourself pure as possible. 
You have to purify yourself spiritually, physically, and mentally. Humble down, obey in every godly discourse. You must follow that thing. Go ahead. In her virginity, lest mm -hmm. she should be defiled and gotten she, with child. Lest she should be what? Lest she should be defiled. Lest she should be defiled in her virginity. Because here she is, she's a virgin. You understand? Get that in um, Genesis 24, 15. In her virginity, lest she should be defiled. Okay. Genesis 24, 15. Read that. You know what? Let's read. Yeah, 15 and 16 together. Genesis chapter 24, verse 15. Go ahead. And it came to pass before he had done speaking that behold, Rebekah came out, who was born to Bethuel, son of Milcah, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, with her pitcher upon her shoulder. You see, she was, even when she, she met the Abraham servant, she was busy. She wasn't idle. That's what you need to understand when you read this chapter. Go ahead. And the damsel was very fair to look upon, mm. a virgin. Neither had any man known her. So she was a virgin, meaning she was a young woman. Then he's also telling us, neither had any man known her, meaning she's never dealt with a man sexually. Go ahead. And she went down to the well and filled her pitcher and came up. So now, let's go back. Sarah 42, verse 10, again. Ecclesiastes, chapter 42, verse 10. Read. In her virginity, lest she should be defiled, and gotten with child in her father's house. Stop right there. It says, in her virginity, meaning what? She's a young woman and no man has ever dealt with it. It says, then she gets defiled and gets a child in her father's house. Now, guess what? She's no longer a virgin. She's dealt with a man. She's still a, she's still a young woman, but she's now defiled sexually. A man has humbled her, abused her. Then it says, um, and got in with child in her father's house. Now you are a baby mama in your father's house because that boy that you slept with, he just has wanted to get his rocks off. And guess what? You fall pregnant, you don't want to kill the baby. Whose bearing is going to be there? The father's bearing. Because you don't know nothing about taking care of a child. You don't know nothing. That's why Titus 2 is written that these young women must be taught how to love their children. You understand? So now she's bringing shame to her father's house because now she's jumping my fence. We kill him What do they call it? A praying mentees. You are busy jumping up when. Hmm? That's what we're reading here. It says in her father's house and having a an husband. Now you get married, but you've got a child. Lest she should be misbehaving herself because you are going to be a bitch to your husband. Because you were a bitch under your father's house. So how else are you going to behave yourself in your father's house? I mean, in your husband's house, if you didn't behave yourself in your, in your father's house. What the hell is this? That's what we're reading here. It says, when she's married, then she should be buried. Because while you are in the father's house, now you tasted the rod, you've fallen pregnant, but you don't stop. You keep having sex. Because you don't want to bring more babies, you have an abortion. Now you get married, you can't have kids because you've been killing them. That's how this happens. You understand? That's why we get on your soul sister so the hardest. Why? Because you're the weaker vessel. You don't know what you're doing. You don't know nothing. You don't understand what this Bible is. That's why you are here to be taught so that you can have knowledge and wisdom and make wise decisions. It's for your protection. So that the day when you're faced with the decision, you're going to use the Bible to make decisions because you know what it says and you apply it. So you're not going to be DC. That's the point. You understand? Now watch this. Give me the book of Sarah 45. Same book. Sarah 45, verse, 20, verse 26. Watch this thing right here. Ecclesiastes, chapter 45, verse 26. Mm -hmm. God give you wisdom in your heart to judge his people in righteousness, that their good things be not abolished, and that their glory may endure forever. Read again, verse 26. 
Ecclesiastes chapter 45 verse 26. Great. God give you wisdom in your heart to judge his people in righteousness. Mm. That they are good things be not abolished and that they are glory may endure forever. So now the most said God says, I'm going to give you wisdom in your mind to judge my people in righteousness. That their good things be not abolished. Meaning what? The kingdom. Rulership of empires. That their glory may endure forever. We may rule forever. And live forever. You see that thing? Now watch this. Give me First Timothy 5. Let's go back there. First Timothy 5. Let's go back. First Timothy. First Timothy 5 verse 14. First Timothy chapter 5 verse 14. Go ahead. I will therefore that the younger women marry. Stop right there. Now we understand what that means. Preparation first. We went into Toby 3. So he says, I will therefore that the younger women marry. So instead of doing, instead of doing verse 13, they will do verse 14 to stay away from verse 13. Read that part again, verse 14. First Timothy chapter 5, verse 14. Mm -hmm. I will therefore that the younger women marry. Get married, go ahead. Bear children. Then they can have sex or anything sex sexual related. Guess what? They deal with their husband with that. Go ahead. Guide the house. Take care of the house. Read. Give none occasion to, to the adversary to speak reproachfully. Meaning what? Speaking things which they ought not. Meaning that's going to stop you from doing that because your husband will check you. You understand? Don't be running your mouth. Next verse. Go ahead. For some are already turned aside after Satan. Read it again. First Timothy chapter 5 verse 15. For some are already turned aside after Satan. You see that part right there? Already. He says already. He says for because some are already turned aside after Satan. Meaning some, Satan has already had them in their midst. You understand? They are already doing baby steps for Satan to now take over to do the obvious. You understand? So that's why it says, for in or, so we to prevent this, read verse 20. This is how we prevent verse four, verse 15. Read verse 20 now. Come on. First Timothy chapter 5, verse 20. Go ahead. Them that sin rebuke before all, that others mm -hmm. also may fear. Read again. First Timothy chapter 5, verse 20. Go ahead. Them that sin rebuke before all, that others also may fear. You see what the Bible is saying? It says, them that sin rebuke before all that others also may fear now watch this so read that verse again for me first timothy chapter 5 verse 20 mm -hmm. them that sin rebuke before all that others also may fear that others also may fear now the reason why i'm bringing this out is because there's a situation in soldiers of christ that that has been taking place, which I caught of it. I caught of it last night when we were coming back from the movies. There's something that happened which really disturbed me. Okay. So hence the class, because I was definitely pissed off because of this thing just before we left. So now I have to bring it out. Okay. So Okay, so I need you men and women to pay close attention, okay? Okay, video's on. So, we, we have a situation, all right, which obviously happened last night. So, completely accidental, but is something I've been observing for a while. However, yesterday when um, I needed to use, you know, I needed to get an Uber because we need to go back. So I got Sister Phoebe's phone because we needed somebody that has bald or what or whatever. Is it Uber? So then I'm seeing there's a chat that pops up on the phone. I'm not the one to be checking people's phones, but 
it just disturbed me. I saw something very friendly. And then I was done with it. Then something was like, you know what? Could you go back? The spirit is like, go back and actually get this phone in. See what the hell is going on. And to my surprise, evil is going on. Okay. So I commissioned Sister Phoebe to forward me all the messages that she's been communicating with this boy. Because that's what's been happening. So last night, I sat down, I reviewed all the messages and the, the voice notes. Well, it's not looking good. So it's evil stuff. Nothing, nothing, the sex has not taken place. So it was caught A. But I had to bring it out because I need to make sure that this does not happen again. Okay. This will not repeat itself ever again. Because if it does, sister, you're going to have to leave us. Okay. Because we're building a nation here. This is not uh, the best whorehouse in, in, in Midrand. Oh, no. We're building a nation. Yeah. Okay. So uh, pay close attention. A couple of clips. So just pay close attention. Okay. So it is what it is. So I'm just going to play a couple of them. And then, yeah. OK, you see my screen, right? You see the audio files? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. OK, yes, sir. so I'm going to play them one at, one at a time. So you brothers and sisters, just pay close attention. Because I did speak to the sister about this thing. Because I want this thing to never, ever happen again. There's many counsels I had with the sisters. She's not paying attention. Okay, so yeah, I must say I'm not sure if it's audible. I'm not sure if you brothers and sisters can hear. I'm not playing everything, obviously, but I just need you brothers and sisters to understand how serious this is. Okay, it will not look and can you hear the sound? Yeah. Yes, sir. I must say, yes, sir. You don't look and I like it. So this is the boy. His name is I just call him Aubrey. I, I like that look. I wish. Let me not say I wish, but because I, I know I'm gonna see you soon. Whenever you decide you wanna see me. In fact, let me ask you a question. Why don't you wanna see me? Hey, why don't you wanna see me? Why don't you want to create a time for me just to chill and talk with you? It's like you're forgetting for the last time you and I were together, I was in a relationship and I was engaged. So things happen. A lot has changed that you don't know about. So, yeah, I am a good mother. Like, I believe I am a good mother. A great mother. A lot of people don't know, particularly from 3D, Fridge. Yeah, no one knows my life anymore. Because you guys are there, I'm here. You know, let's just, let's just keep it the way it is. It's not that I don't want to spend time with you. Like, I'm busy, very busy, um, so I don't have time, and the only time that I have to rest is on Sundays, that's the only time where I can actually work. Okay, so I need you men to pay close attention here, okay? So I'm going to play the video, I'm going to play the audio again. It's not that I don't want to spend time. So the first one, the brother says he wants to spend time with the sister. She's responding. Listen to what she says. It's not that I don't want to spend time with you. Like, I'm busy. Very busy. Um, so, I don't have time. And the only time that I have to rest is on Sundays. That's the only time where I can actually get some rest. So, yeah, please come. 
and sometimes on Sundays I don't even get that rest. But when I do, I grab a good rest and and I just I sleep. I wake up, I do my chores, I do what I have to do in the house. I go back to bed, I sleep. So yeah, it's kind of how long does it take for a woman to? So the point is this: the first one, the brother says. He wants to spend time with the sister. The sister says, it's not that I don't want to spend time with you. I'm just busy. So this is not communication according to the scripts. This is boyfriend and girlfriend making plans to meet up. You know what happens when boyfriend and girlfriend meet up? They have sex. Let's keep it 100, okay? Okay. Me, I'm a father. I don't give out. Listen, BS, I will not tolerate BS. Understand that. Okay. For pregnant and give birth. I mean, if you saw me in April, you don't know my situation at the time. But it's okay. If you don't believe me, it's fine. You're not obligated to believe me. Uh uh, Helene. When did you become the mother? Because I was there in April. When did you have the baby? Ay, ay, Sasha, I have to say, when I tell you to me, when I was a pillow of a man, I was a storm, I was a team. Ay, mm-mm, I need to be serious. Mm-mm, young Sasha, mm-mm, come on, mm-mm. I can't believe it. Nope, nope, I, I refuse to believe it. But I told you it was night it looked like it's well. And even at that time it wasn't confirmed. No man, it's in thirty twelve. You go to thirty sixteen. Hey, I closed on the sixteenth. And then after that I tried to call you and it didn't go through. So Kanana you know how to but but hey, it's fine. Um, yeah. So the plan was to meet in December, this December that we come from. Let's keep going. Hi, you know, who's on third? What can I say? Yeah, there's nothing I can say. I've been going over to Minnesota long and I'm not December, but I, I long pull up. So I, I can have my thing is I'm building a kind of suit. Okay, give Actually, that's precisely what I'm saying. A lot of people, particularly from House of the Lord, people from 3D, people that I knew when I was in Benoni, they don't know anything about my life right now. In fact, not a lot of people. Everyone. Like, nobody from that side knows what's going on. I don't communicate with anyone from that side. I don't know what's going on that side. They don't know what's going on in my life. So, that's what it is. And I did tell you. I told you. If you remember correctly, the last time we were together, um, no, not the last time, when we, that photo, that, yeah, that day, I told you that I was in a relationship. And I told you, Huri, if I don't marry this guy, this I told you, Huri, that was the last relationship I would be in. If things don't work out, then... No, actually, I'm lying. It's not the same day. Mara, we were, I think, a different day. I told you, if things don't work out with this guy, now I don't think I'll have the energy to pursue another relationship. That's what I said. So things, you know, worked out like that. I know, I know, like, it takes, like, nine months. So, so, just to, maybe it might be low. So, what's happening is, 
when the sister was with another brother in the world, this brother was pursuing him. That's what you are picking up here. Okay. So now the, the Negro is no longer in the picture. The brother wants, he wants some now. That's the point. Okay. Understand. That's for a woman to, to have a baby. But here's the thing though. I, I hear what you are saying and I believe, me, this is just me believing that the Celine that I know could have told me, as um, I'm expecting or something like that. If not, then she could have told me when I visited, if she was in a state where she was like, ah. And the engagement part, you didn't tell me about that. I didn't know. I didn't know anything about that. But I could thank you, Tim. I mean, I think they prove. If it's not too much to... This brother is a simp. That is obvious. You don't have to explain it. He's a simp. Okay? The problem is this. Of all the classes that have been coming out regarding simps and Jezebels, Sister Phoebe is not paying attention. Okay. Ask more. No, I remember. Like you said, because you said we should meet up um, on a Sunday. So now I had to check out my calendar. I had commitments on the weekend that is four and the weekend that is twelve. So I said to you, remind me after the twelve, because then at that time my calendar was empty. Mm. And I only found out because we are closing on we actually closed on the 21st, but um, I, uh, there was only one of us at the office after the 16th. So two of us, we closed, and it wasn't confirmed until the last day. Sorry, okay. You and you can close. Uh, then we opened earlier, and then the one who stayed behind, she opened a week after us. So... Yeah, even me, I didn't know. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's fine. There's still time, I think. I hope. You see? These are these are plans to meet up. And when we read Exodus 22, 16, the scripture tells you exactly what happens when a boy is enticing a maid. But this maid, she's okay with it because she likes it. Because what we read in Deuteronomy 22, verse 23 and 24, that's exactly what's going on here. Okay. Remember, you said to me, like, maybe it was 12 or so, and you didn't confirm it. And uh, you will confirm it closer to that date. But you, you went quiet afterwards. You went quiet. Then, as I was at home, Actually, I was not at home. At the 16, I get to more Pinoni. Going to Katle Home, Go Palm Ridge, where I stay. So, when I got there, I found my brother there saying he's going to Lesotho. Don't I want to go with him? So, I didn't even plan the trip. I was not planning to go home. Yes, I was thinking about it, but I was not planning to. Because, uh, I had some responsibilities. There were a few things that I needed I needed to clear up first. But when I got there, my brother was like, hey, I, let's go. <laughs> and I said, yes, no, let's go, thinking that was play. Hey, can do a serious. We went, we traveled 16th, yeah, the night of the 16th. We were traveling. We got home the 17th in the morning, yeah. So, yeah. And I came back the 27th. Yeah, I tried calling you and we arranged something, but it didn't pull through. Yeah. To be fair, everyone, okay, maybe let me rephrase. Not just everyone from House of the Lord, but everyone that I knew when I was there, when I was that side, 3D, House of the Lord, Benoni area, and you. All of those people. Nobody knows. 
including people like you know mom tandy is like my mother but even you know she doesn't know i had close friends who also don't know anything about my life so So, brothers and sisters, this is not many years ago. This is now. Understand? This is not old stuff. This is recent stuff. Okay? I'm going to play the last one. That's I'm not going to go through the whole stuff. Um, and I, I agree. Maybe you were just blinded by whatever was blinding you at the time and you missed the important details mm. but yeah well we're here now so. me like this thing is vexing my spirit yeah but when you say like everyone from house of the lord i'm not from house of the lord yeah that's that day i'm not from house of the lord and another thing is that ne. See, see. <laughs> Another thing is that I'm not everyone. I'm not everyone. I'm not many more me. I'm... You see, that's how Sims thinks. They always think they're special. Why? Because a sister will pump them. That's what we're reading in Proverbs 5, Proverbs 7, Proverbs... Okay, I forgot now. I'm Sam. I'm, I'm the cool guy. I'm the guy who's your close friend. Um, yeah. Or oh, I'm the guy who assumed that he's your close friend. Yeah, I'm not everyone, so <laughs> I don't get it. I don't, there's no way I can remember when you told me something like that. I was gonna speak about it every day. But if you say you told me that, I believe you. Maybe I was not paying attention. Maybe I was blinded by your pretty face and stuff. You see that thing right there? Let's go back a little bit. I need you men to pay attention. Okay. I believe you. Maybe I was not paying attention. Maybe I was blinded by your pretty face and stuff. And the love that I was always, you know, telling you how much I love you. Maybe I was blinded by that. And you... Now, I'm going to close it right there. Let me go back again. Because I don't have to listen to a lot of stuff here going forward. But when you say, like, everyone from House of the Lord, I'm not from House of the Lord. Yeah, that's that day. I'm not from House of the Lord. And another thing is that, ne? See, see. <laughs> another thing is that I'm not everyone. I'm not everyone. I'm not many more me. I'm, I'm Sam. I'm, I'm the cool guy. I'm the guy who's your close friend. Um, yeah. Or oh, I'm the guy who assumed that he's a close friend. Yeah, I'm not everyone. So <laughs> I don't get it. I don't, there's no way I can remember when you told me something like that. I was going to speak about it every day. But if you say you told me that, I believe you. Maybe I was not paying attention. Maybe I was blinded by your pretty face and stuff. And the love that I was always, you know... Telling you how much I love you. Maybe I was blinded by that. And I didn't want to believe what you were telling me at that time. Because uh, enormous. When you love someone, <laughs> whatever they say, sometimes doesn't make sense. What makes sense in your eyes is just you love the person. Yeah. Mm, this is some evil stuff here. Now I can understand. Now I understand. Now I get the the full story and yeah i hope so too that there's still time i hope so too that there's still time i hope yeah yeah i think as well there's time it's just that we need to you know put a plan into place because if we're gonna keep juggling everything around it it might not work you know yeah, but I believe they will, we can make time. <laughs> oh, I hope we can make time. Listen, it's not my job to convince you, and I'm not going to try and convince you. So, if you don't believe it, it's fine. If you do, that's also fine. Nah, I'm just telling you. Just so you know. Oh, should I come that side, maybe? To come and see her face to face, or him? I don't know. 
I, but no, no, something is not adding up. Nope, nope, I refuse. There's no baby here. When did you go on maternity leave? Ay, 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 keke, gala. So why didn't you say anything if you got that feeling? Like, why didn't you, why didn't you ask? Because then I would have told you. You know what? The reason why I'm so eager and determined on finding out everything is that when was it? I think the 12th. Yeah, the 12th of December. I had this feeling that the reason why you don't want to meet up with me is because you are pregnant. I had that feeling. I don't know where it came from, but that's the feeling that I had. You know, and I was asking myself, how could that happen? How could things like that happen? Could you give me Sarah 42 verse 1? So there was no pregnancy. Um, as far as like, I, as, as far as my, my investigations are concerned. Okay, Sarah 42, read verse 1 for me. Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 42 verse 1. Go ahead. Of these things, be not thou ashamed, and accept no person to sin thereby. He says, don't be ashamed when it comes to these things and accept no person to sin thereby. Jump down to verse 6. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 42, verse 6. Go ahead. Sure keeping, sure keeping is good mm -hmm. when evil wife is and shut Stop up. right there. He says, sure keeping is good where an evil wife is. So he says, don't be ashamed. You understand? To, uh, to do show keeping, to make sure that you are strict and you investigate. Don't just be listening to things and just believing them. Mm -mm. It says, show keeping is good when evil wife is. When evil daughter is, you keep show. You must what? Show keeping, meaning lock her ass in the house. You understand? Watch her like a hawk. That's what the Bible is saying. When evil wife is and shut up, meaning be strict. Where many hands are, where many people are, you understand? That's what the Lord is saying. What we what we hearing here is what is evil communication. You understand? This is evil communication. If you are in the truth, there is no way you can tell what this sister is in the truth. It's impossible. You can't. You cannot tell. It's sisters that go to conquer. I get there's a place now, Barke Conquer. I don't never. I don't know. I've never been there, but I've heard of it. So these are the type of things, these are the type of communications that you, you can expect from people that go to places like that. You understand? Not in Islam, but you're going to hear stuff like this in Islam. There's another case that's going on, not with this sister, another one. Listen, in Islam, there's some evil going on here. The hell is this? And I was asking myself a lot of questions, which is like, because you kept on postponing and postponing and something came up something came up and i'm like the first thing that ran to my mind was like ah this lady's pregnant she's hiding her pregnancy from me and stuff like that so like now when when i'm seeing this now dad came back that's why i was so eager and wanting to know really like is it true now so I understand the fact and yeah, I must say congratulations. Yeah. I think you're a good mother and you'll make a good mother. Yeah. Hey, I'm joking. I am not pregnant. I've never been pregnant. I don't have a baby. No, I'm just Yeah, now brothers, you might be thinking or like, why why the long dry of I am pregnant? Because now the brother's intention will be what? The brother's intention will pop out to the surface. The brother will confess how he really feels. Okay? Listen, you brothers, hmm. I get when I say stuff, you think I'm crazy. See, this old man don't know what he's saying. No problem. Watch this. Go back to Proverbs chapter 7. Read verse 7 again. Read verse 5. You know what? Proverbs 7, read verse 21. Read that thing again for me. I'm going to show you something with this verse right here. Read that. Proverbs chapter 7, verse 21. Go ahead. 
With her much fair speech, she caused mm. him to yield. Uh -huh. with, with the flattering of her lips, she forced him. So, 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 which means that because the brother says, okay, congratulations, you are pregnant, it means what? It means, okay, that means he, can, he, will, he will start pursuing another female. That's the mindset, Ben. No, no, I was joking, I was joking. But the brother's intentions are known now. Listen, me, we see me, I know men. And I know women too. How they move. Now watch this. Okay. You see, there's a scripture. Give me that in, um, give me Sarah 15. No, no, Proverbs, Proverbs. Um, Proverbs chapter, let me see, let me see. Give me Proverbs, Proverbs chapter, Proverbs 29, verse 3. Watch this. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 3. Go ahead. Whoso loveth wisdom rejoiceth his father. But he that keepeth company with harlots spendeth his substance. You see that? But he that spend that keepeth company with harlots spendeth his substance. So, I mean, now in this case, you spend time with a wicked Negro in the world. I mean, there's so, I mean, his God is not, you know what? Let me show you something, what happened, what Samson did. I'm going to show you what Samson did. And his, his parents, they asked him like, so there's no enough men in Israel, there's no women in Israel that you can marry them. Where is that? He's in Judges, right? Judges 15, is it? Uh -huh. Judges 14. Get Judges 14 and verse 2. So he saw a woman in Timnah. He said, I want him to, I want to marry this one. Watch this. Judges chapter 14, verse 2. Go ahead. And he came up and told his father and his mother and said, I have seen a woman in Timnah of the daughters mm -hmm. of the Philistines. Now, therefore, get her for me to wife. Great. Then his father and his mother said unto him, Is there never a woman among the daughters of thy brethren? Uh -huh. or, or among all my people, that thou goest to take a wife of the uncircumcised Philistines? And Samson said unto his father, Get her for me, for she pleased me well. That's the mindset right there. So you come, you leave Israel, you leave the the comfort of being protected by the Mosa God and his holy angels, you go out in the world to seek a nigger in the world? Are you kidding me? This is demonic. This is demonic stuff. Demonic activity. Okay? That's some evil stuff. And guess what? Next time I'll be discussing a, a brother in the truth doing the same thing. Because don't get it twisted. You're going to have the same thing happen with a brother. You might think I'm kidding. Oh yeah, it will pop up here. Don't just watch the space. It will happen, all right. Okay. Because counsel is not being followed. You think the Bible is a fairy tale. No, this Bible is alive. I need you to understand that thing. You men and women, both, both of you. You need to get that thing. Okay. That's what they said to the other. That's what Samson they asked the question. Is there no is there no women in Israel that you can marry? Why do you have to go to marry a dusty Hamite? How do you even know that that brother is not a Hemite? How do you know? You don't. He's just taking chances. Mada is if it. Hmm? Unbelievable. My mother to these beautiful children, and that's it. I don't know now. I would actually be really disappointed in myself. But yeah, no, there's no baby. There's no. <laughs> There's no, there's none of that. The thing is, I refused. Like, I refused to listen to that feeling. I, truly speaking, I refused to listen to that feeling. Because as much as I said I'm cool with us just being friends, somewhere deep in my heart, I still had hope that you and I would end up together one day. Mm, 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 mm. Could you go back to 1 Corinthians 15, 33? This is not a holy conversation at all. Okay. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33. 
Go ahead. Be not deceived. Mm. Evil communications corrupt good manners. You see that thing? Because you was deceived. That's why you, you find yourself be doing one in evil communication. Now your manners are corrupt because you was deceived by your own lust. So go back to, now give me Proverbs now. Give me Proverbs 31, verse 26. Watch this. You know what? Give me Titus 1, verse 11. Titus 1, verse 11. So you brothers, you need to understand. Sisters come into the truth, they've got demons on them. You already just want to jump on them. You have no idea. Mary Magdalene, and back then, this is Mary Magdalene. So how do you think the sisters now are? What type of demons do you think they got? Excuse me. What verse you say we what, what verse did I say you must get? Uh, I don't think so mentioned the verse. I didn't hear it, sir. Apologies. Mm. I know it's Titus. Yes, Titus 1, verse 11. Thank sir. you. Titus 1, verse 11. Yeah, let's read that. Titus chapter 1, verse 11. Go ahead. Whose Start mouth? Ten. Start of verse 10. Verse 10. Watch this. Titus chapter 1, verse 10. Go ahead. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers. That's what you are seeing. Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. That's what you're seeing here. On, that's what you are hearing here. V many vain is as many unruly and vain talkers. Okay, go ahead. Especially they of the circumcision. No, 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 no. Re read that verse again. Titus chapter 1, verse 10. Go ahead. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers. And what? And deceivers. That part right there. Remember, the, the, another word for um, Satan means deceiver. Deceivers meaning what? Satan. The devil. Is uh, They are deceivers. Go ahead. Especially they of the circumcision. And especially they of the tribe of Judah. That's what he's talking about right there. Yeah. And especially they of the tribe of Judah. Southern kingdom. Keep going. Whose mouth must be stopped. Whose mouth must be stopped. Go ahead. Who subvert whole houses. You see teaching that thing? things. Sub hold on. Who subvert whole houses, meaning destroy what we're trying to build. Read. Teaching things which they ought not for uh -huh. filthy lucre's sake. You see that thing? For some kind of a vain glory benefit of some kind. That has nothing to do with the building of the nation. Okay. I refuse to listen to that feeling. I truly speaking, I refuse to listen to that feeling. Cause, as much as I said I'm cool with us just being friends, somewhere deep in my heart, I still had hope that you and I will end up together one day, mm. and I still had hope that you and I are gonna build like, you know family together and like be the best thing ever that you know we can ever imagine and i still had that thing this is the love of my life i cannot be having thoughts like this you see this is that this, this for me this is a nightmare for me okay what i'm hearing right now this for me this is my nightmare okay because me, this is the stuff that keep me up at night, okay? When I think about Sister Phoebe, when I think about my the 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 the, the, the her younger sisters, that's my thought process. I have to worry about roads out there. That's the thought. Hmm? Nightmares, yeah, okay. Demonic stuff. This is some demonic activity going on here, okay. This stuff really, like, they made me sick to my stomach last night. I slept around 2 o'clock listening to this garbage. But I had to. Because we have a nation to build, okay? I cannot be having, you know, imaginations like this, things like this. Like, I refused literally to listen to that thought. I talked myself out of that thought of, Hey, maybe she's pregnant. I'm like, no, this is the love of my life. I'm mm -hmm. talking about. This is the love of my life. You see, you can't make this stuff up, yeah. Okay. How can I wish things like this? And what if she is not? And I say it, and that ruins the relationship that we have together. So those were like questions that were raining 
in my mind uh, questions and things you know yeah so that's a challenge that i had but now i guess it's, it's time to accept and kind of like you know move on if possible lie Maybe. that's just a lie just stay alone you know stay alone and yeah because yeah it is what it is he's just deceiving himself on this one well i must say i'm relieved i'm, I'm relieved but why will you let me say everything that i just say right now hey. you know that scripture that class that came out jezebel hands for simps he's befitting right now told you the prophets are back see you don't pay attention okay <laughs> Oh boy, you can't make this stuff up. Yeah, watch this. Let me show you something here. And this is not to destroy the sister. This is to, this is to correct to make sure the sister don't repeat this thing again. There's some evil stuff. And you brothers, you better make sure that you are horny, you are burning. You better make sure that you give yourself to fasting and prayer. Because I don't want none of you to be jumping up like a, like a popcorn, being a horny goat. Wanting to get a Jezebel out there. Especially you men. Listen, I'll come down on you like a ton of bricks. Yeah. Okay. Understand that thing. Okay. Read that in Surah 33 verse 5. Ecclesiasticus chapter 33 verse 5. Mm -hmm. The heart of the foolish is like a cartwheel. Right. And his thoughts are like a rolling axle tree. That's what you are hearing there with the brother. He's completely, he's completely infatuated with this. And my daughter here, she loves it. Could you imagine that? There's some evil stuff here. Now you're gonna look at me otherwise. And I was <laughs> might as well see it while I'm at it. Like Literally, there were tears falling. You can't make it up yet. Yeah. Right now. He, he was crying. I, I don't know how, but... He's crying. He's yeah. falling hmm? right now. And I'm, I'm not the person who normally cries, but... He's lying. Right he's now, a simp. Tears falling off my face. <laughs> hey, Mutomdi, please, man. Because remember I told you, I had a thought, you know, I had this thing that was playing in my mind, so... Immediately when you said your mother, I didn't even think of the kids. This I know about, but I didn't even think about them. So, um, go back to First Timothy five verse twenty. First Timothy five verse twenty. Yeah, you can switch on the switch off the video. I'm almost done. Go back to First Timothy five verse twenty. I can't listen to that stuff. First Timothy chapter five verse twenty. Them that sin, rebuke before all, that mm -hmm. others also may fear. So the reason why we have to do this is because of what? That others may fear that are having the same thought, both men and women. Give me Sarah 20 verse 1. Read that. Ecclesiasticus chapter 20 verse 1. Go ahead. There is a reproof that is not calmly. There is okay. a reproof that is not calmly, meaning it's not going to be nice. Okay, go ahead. Come on. Again, some man holdeth his tongue and he some is wise. Holdeth, it says, some man holdeth his tongue and is wise. Read. It is much better to reprove than to be angry secretly. You see that? Me, I don't like to do that. I'll reprove. I don't want to be angry secretly. And that's the same thought. That's the same spirit we all have to have. Read. And he that confesses his fault shall be preserved from hurt. You see that? And he that confesseth his fall shall be preserved from hurt. Read. How good is it when thou art reproved to show repentance? Come on. For so shall thou escape willful sin. You see that thing? And you will escape willful sin. But there's one thing that I will say. Okay, put your videos on. All right. There's one thing that I will say. There's one thing that I will say in terms of this. Um, 
the sister, Sister Phoebe, she didn't put up a fight. She didn't make excuses. She took full responsibility of this thing. That is the one thing I will say. Okay. Because I would have been extremely pissed off even more. She would be gone. Yeah. And the only time she would come back if she come back with her husband. So this thing was caught before it went further. You understand? So that is the mercy of the Lord right there. That's the mercy of the Most High. Because if it was caught too late, then really there's nothing we can do. Okay? So let this be a lesson for all of you. This is not a game. It's not a game. Okay? Literally, we are at war. Understand that. And you brothers, that's your sister. So you have to protect it. Don't be lusting after the sister because I've seen some brothers, they are lusting after her. Oh, yes, yeah. Yeah, I see it. Don't think I don't see it. That's some nasty stuff. You better get your shit together. I'm telling you straight up. How are you going to protect the sister if you're lusting after her? That's not going to happen. So, get your mind right. Okay, you know who you are. Okay, watch this. Okay, so from now on, sister, you have to understand, I'm going to be sitting on you more than ever now. You understand what I'm saying to you? Yes. Okay. So, understand. You are not, you are, anybody that you're going to be talking to on your phone is going to be your family members, your sister and your brothers and so forth, and people at work, and it must be work related. Anything outside of that is not happening. Any communication is going to be with the brothers and sisters in the truth. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. And don't think you'll be doing things in secret. I hope you learn your lesson by now. Let me, this will be a lesson for you. There is a God. Okay. So any of you brothers involved in some secret sin, you better make sure to repent quickly. Before your sin will be your accusers on that day. Like you see what's happening here. So stay in spirit. Okay. Okay. Make sense? All praise, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. okay. Yes, sir. I'm going to end the class right here. Okay. But again, Sister Phoebe, I need you to get your shit together. Excuse my French, but yes. I'm rude in speech, but not in knowledge. Okay. Get your shit together. This will not happen again. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. And so what I need you to do is I need you to apologize to the congregation about this thing. Now. Yes, sir. Shalom family. Um so I'm like to say I'm sorry for my behavior being out of the spirit and allowing me to sin even more to fulfill my lust i'm sorry for bringing shame into the house of israel and i'm sorry for bringing shame to my father's house as well okay all praises for i have received of the lord that which also i delivered unto you that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, it to show the Lord's death till he come. 
Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen.